Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews podcast number 60. 60! We're going to be catching up on the recent film and TV shows we've watched before going over the latest film news. In the second part, Andy and I will be going over the things that we are excited for in the coming year of 2024, which includes movies, TV shows and games. And in the third part, hopefully, we'll be answering your questions questions nice andy awesome to have you here what's up man how have you been dude not too bad not too bad it's been it feels like it's been a minute since we uh had a chance to catch up but um, it has it has yeah yeah it's been um it's been fucking just crazy busy it's that season yeah it's that season i'm gonna i'm gonna make a confession now because we're on the is it the 18th today? it's the 18th of november <clears throat> all my decorations are up what um yeah i'm sorry what so <laughs> The house, I've said this before on the podcast, is we turn... I'm not a Grinch, honestly. We turn that fucking house into a grotto at Christmas. Yeah. I love Christmas. Snow I love to girls, go all out. lights, Dude, there's, there's like... Everything is like... <laughs> the whole make, ceiling's covered. Yeah, it is. It's covered. <laughs> nice. in, there's lights. There's fucking paper chains in through the dining room and the front room and up the stairs and Have everything like that. you started like writing that. Christmas cards out already? No, fuck <laughs> I don't do Christmas cards. That's the one thing I'm like, fuck Christmas cards. Now, I, I'm, I would... I would honestly go with what I feel more traditionally to say, like first weekend in December, I think is the perfect time to put them up. I think so. Yeah. But these last few, we've had a bit. I've had personally like with a lot of work and a lot of stress and a little bit of like you know head case shit. Um, my wife was just like, "You need something. You need some Christmas spirit," which is her basically <laughs> going, "Put the fucking decorations up," <laughs> right. and I did it it's like a knob. But um, so because it's a long long process i started it this week but i just yeah i got it all done but yeah the whole nice. thing looks really nice. nice i did the to surprise donna because she's a big harry potter mark so i did the whole like board with um some lights on and floating candles and stuff okay. in our dining room oh very nice it was one of these <laughs> where i'm doing it going this ain't gonna work this is gonna look fucking stupid and i was like that looks pretty fucking sweet actually so yeah very good it's uh very good. It's, so you're it's, feeling it's the festive good. spirit yeah already. man it's festive but it's busy you know so yeah. we're just sat there watching through um I mean, we'll go through the catch up, obviously, but we're Definitely, just yeah. starting to work through like Christmas specials and <laughs> you know what I mean, like doing yeah. different bits like that. No, I don't need to start my paper chains in January, thank you, dude. Because <laughs> uh, sorry, Ian in the chat, he may be sick, but he's with us in spirit. Indeed, Ian's because not because, live because I was with us smart, tonight. made the paper chains, and then bought very large plastic tubs to put them in, and they go in my attic, so they don't get. Well, I've got it down to a fine art now. They come out of the box and just go up on the Straight ceiling, up. and I'm just like done. Very like, good. <laughs> I still takes a week. <laughs> wish to apologise for everyone listening into the podcast, as I'm still feeling a little bit phlegmy myself. So if I have to cough for uh, sound uh, rough do, every so often, I'll way. do it that way. Yeah. Indeed, I might just take a quick drink and uh, clear me throat. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, yeah, it's been it's been nice. But, um, yeah. Back back to the gym really regularly now. I got a workout partner again, a friend of mine who did the boxing with me. Like yeah. the charity boxing match. he's he's fighting the gym that i go and train at for like kickboxing stuff he's fighting for them in local fights so okay. we've been like training together in the mornings but it does mean now that like cause we've got a new gym just up the road from us that i can get there a little bit earlier and every morning after my workout i finish and i get to have a sauna before i start work that's pretty good i that is how you should start your day. <laughs> so, start your day com yeah. coming out of a sauna. Just, it's like the, the, the layers of yesterday's bullshit just, just kind of just just flakes off. right off. Yeah, yeah, it just comes straight <laughs> off, man. So I'd, I'd, I'd recommend that if you guys can do that. Definitely. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Before we get all fat again at Christmas. Yay! Again? Yeah. <laughs> fat, uh, fatter. Fatter, is the, yeah. yeah. Fatter at Christmas. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's got to be done. Uh, Fuck it. Next next month when we're doing the Christmas podcast, we'll probably be sat here probably eating mince pies while we do it. I'm, Definitely. I'm we'll have shit. celebration. When it hits mince December, oh, I'm, yeah, the boy <laughs> eats. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now, um, I've got um, one thing before we get into the catch-up. There's one thing that's uh, really got, got me down this week. Obviously, no, not, not only was I not feeling too well, but... Um, it's something I like to bring up all the time with the, uh, when talking about off the shelf. It usually comes up in the question segments um, about copyright and fair use and how do we get away with film clips and so on. And um, I've mentioned several times how I combat all of the claims, uh, all of the strikes, etc., etc. And um, uh, this last, well, two weeks ago, we got the claim on the video. I appealed it. I'll tell you, the film studio, it's Paramount Studios, turned around and rejected it. So I did the other appeal. They rejected that and hit our channel with a YouTube strike. 
<clears throat> so I um, put in a claim against that strike and then I actually got um, a very uh, aggressive letter from Paramount Studios themselves. And this has never happened before. And they literally lawyered up and threatened oh, to man. sue uh, me and Ian and off the shelf reviews uh, for a substantial amount of money. And they... They, uh, they they hit us with the copyright fair use laws. They uh, rejected our fair use claim and gave all of the reasons why our video wasn't fair use. And I, uh, I yeah, usually, I mean, I was, I, I, I basically feel like I got fucked by Paramount Studios this week. It was a very, very terrible and stressful day. I spent the whole day, because basically I had until that night to respond to them to uh, to uh, um, either go, okay, take me to court, or I delete the video and accept the strike, mm. which lasts 90 days, so until late February. Um, and after everything that I went through, uh, basically doing copyright law research again, I hadn't had to do it for a few years because I'd just fallen upon what had tried and tested and worked in the past. Uh, so, yeah, it was a very dejected, uh, horrible, downtrodden day uh, where I eventually, for the first time in years, conceded to a mega film company and went, OK, you win. Um, which thankfully hasn't launched a precedent for them to start claiming all the other Paramount Studios films that we've done, because that was what I thought they would then do. And yeah. then just cite the same yeah. rhetoric that they'd put in that email. Once, it was once very there's, frightening. Once there's like precedent for it. That's exactly. It, yeah. It? If I concede once, yeah. I concede every time. It's essentially... Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a rough day. Um, but yeah, I, I, after I deleted the video and accepted the strike and everything else, I was just like, you know, I got angry. Yeah. I went through the gambit of, uh, of emotions, etc. And I was like, you know what? No, we're still going to have that video. I tried editing the video in the studio. Uh, the editing software just kept crashing. Um, so, um, what I, uh, basically the, the key, the, the re I'll just get into it quickly. I, I don't want to go on to it too much. I'm actually going to make a small video about this to go on the YouTube video to explain uh, this. I'm, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put a thumbnail, uh, on, uh, on the screen right now. So if you look at the screen right now, sorry for those of you listening to the audio version in the bottom left corner on the screen, there is the template. The film is on the television screen behind Ian and myself. That is how I will be presenting that film footage throughout that entire film review. The film review went straight up, didn't get detected by the uh, by YouTube's uh, you know AI uh, blocking system, so like it's not going to get touched because it is massively transformative in nature because the film is out of aspect ratio. It's been covered up, so. For, in particular, Universal Studios and Paramount Pictures, if we do continue to get Patreon requests for those sorts of films, this sort of template uh, will cover up. Um, so it means I still get the film review up, we still get to talk about it. It's just, unfortunately, something I never wanted to concede and have happen is now uh, happening. Um, but uh, I just it wanted sucks, to give it's you a guys a, a pre-warning. So... When mm. a video like that does go up and you see that, it is distracting. I don't like it. Um, but hopefully you guys understand uh, where we're coming from. And I have to, Ian and I have to avoid strikes uh, for at least until the end of February. So you might get a few more Canon films. You might get a few more uh, Full Moon Pictures uh, films. You might get the rest of the, the subspecies sequels. Um, mm. Because we know that uh, they're, they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just wanted to address that and just uh, give you guys a heads up. Um, before that particular film review does go up, um, hopefully I, I will hopefully make a small video just explaining everything that has happened and why uh, the need for us to do that. But yeah, uh, it, it's fresh on my mind. I just wanted to kind of get it off my chest a little bit. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see Ian this week as well to talk about it. Uh, but it almost kind of worked out because I went through all of that on the day that Ian and I would be recording which I didn't get that resolved until like four or five o'clock, which would give me an hour before Ian got here to uh, to get the review <laughs> like sorted and ready to film, which so it kind of worked out. But at the same time, like, yeah, been uh, a little bit shit. But um, it's so many fucking hoops. It's so many, so hoops, many hoops being dude. a YouTuber and doing film reviews. But um, I have still I'm still watching uh, um, uh, like YouTube 
uh, fair use claims and support videos. But like a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the material that I researched beforehand is to been deleted or disappeared from YouTube. So uh, I had to basically just formulate new uh, a new document basically that I'm going to need to use to continue my, my arguments against these megacorps. But yeah, it's just very frustrating, very annoying. But uh, uh, thank you guys for listening while I uh, just... Uh, it's good to rant now and get that out. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. So I want to get to the good stuff, the stuff mm. that we've watched over the last month that uh, hopefully uh, you guys uh, will have seen or will at least clue you into uh, to some good shows to watch. First one on my list is The Fall of the House of Usher. Oh, this was so good. This was so good. Now, this I, was so I, much I mean, fun. I think last podcast I was like, yeah, it's based on a true story, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it was the Edgar Allan Poe uh, story that it was based on. Um, but yeah, that's how little I knew of it. Until somebody mentioned uh, that this was being done by uh, Mike Flanagan, who I have loved absolutely everything that this man has uh, he's been put smashed. out. So he's been far. smashing it, hasn't he? Absolutely Especially with this cast it. as well, because it's oh, same cast. Oh, because he's some of the, yeah. the Netflix cast from you know The Haunting on Hill House and... Bly Manor, Gerald's and game, and Gerald's game, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, all, all of his stuff. He's basically just borrowed and pillaged actors here and there that uh, that he works well with. I will say one of the best additions to this cast was Mark Hamill, who I'd not seen in any of the other uh, Mate, Mike Flanagan stuff. He smashed that role. Yes, hell yeah! It's I mean, they probably all did. my favorite performance of the year. Yeah, Mark Hamill Mark in Hamill's particular performance. Oh. Yeah, he like I was just like this character could have his own spin off show. Hundred percent. I want to see like a young version of him. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to see where, how he got to the way his when character the head is, is in this. the head of the family is talking about him, where he's like, I'm pretty sure that man's eating people. It's like, yeah, that is the vibe. Because even they don't fully know the vibe. <laughs> they just know that when they need to lawyer up. And they get this Mark Hamill character in. That is great. Uh, but yeah, the whole the whole premise of it is um, uh, to the, to secure their fortune and future. Two ruthless siblings build a family dynasty that begins to crumble when their heirs mysteriously die one by one. It starts off with like a court case, mm. uh, and the uh, you know the prosecuting lawyer is like, "I've got a mole in your family that's spilling the beans, which is why your empire is going to fall." And so the family get together and the dad, um, played by Bruce Greenwood, uh, basically says, you know, I will pay like 50 million to my son or daughter that fingers and brings me the mole in the family that's giving the prosecution this evidence. And then one by one, the siblings start dying. Mm. Um, so but it's it's also uh, the way that the structure of the seasons told is a uh, lots of flashbacks uh, throughout all of the episodes but they really build up this this family uh, and it makes you makes you sympathetic for some really horrible people yeah uh, but yeah it had eight episodes of fantastic storytelling it's some of the best Pacing. structure I've yes. ever seen because there's they're they're telling in each episode they are telling a, a current story they're flashing back to an overarching story that is telling you how we got to here and whilst also focuses on focusing one on sibling. one sibling and telling their backstory and how you got here you're like he's, he's spinning plates yes so well absolutely it's, absolutely it is it, it was one that i watched the first episode and kind of was like well this is me now and <laughs> yes. i knocked out I, I was walking around the house doing stuff with my tablet so because i couldn't stop, stop watching, watching it wow <laughs> you know it was it was one of the i was like oh no this is getting watched and i'm going to re-watch it okay i've got time off for christmas i'm i'm gonna re-watch it before the year's end because i, I think Amazing. we both said we were like this is gonna go into the top 10 this is very there's, likely there's no way the this, the this, there's no way this doesn't go into my top 10 of, yeah. of the year so yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rewatch it yeah so uh highest recommendations from both of us if you've not watched the fall of the house of usher it is exclusively on netflix uh it is absolutely uh worth watching and watch painkiller yes i do need so, to follow up on that what, one because that was your just watch anything about the opioid crisis because it it kind of ties in in a, in a really um in a really cool way so just awesome. yeah, treat yourself to that as well yeah double bill mm. all right yeah next thing i want to talk about is oppenheimer uh, finally like, watched it i finally watched you it finally watched, finally watched the watched event of the summer <laughs> yeah yeah it took a while to see this one i mean uh, i knew i wasn't going to see barbie i knew i wasn't going to do the double bill um, but uh, yeah, this is, if you don't know, if you've been living under a, a blast 
a fallout shelter <laughs> for the, the last six months. Uh, it tells the story of the American scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer and his role in the development of the atomic bomb. It was, of course, directed by Christopher Nolan. It starred Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr. Matt and Damon. so many other uh, great, great actors. Uh, I have to say for... Cast a, is pretty stellar, isn't it? Throughout. I mean, um, some... some Actors are literally only in one or two scenes. Oh, but... Did you like? That's the mayor from Buffy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You literally had like one line on where the camera was this on. Is it a court case? Was it? I was yeah, like hitting yeah. my mate. Like, That's the mayor from, the mayor from Buffy. Buffy. Yeah. Turned into a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna wait for his ascension again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I felt for the pacing. I want to say for the film for three hours was really good. And again, flew by because it did uh, lots of time jumps and flashbacks. So it structured the story in an interesting way, so that you already knew. Uh, you know, the outcome, and then you were seeing why there's this court case and why he's being interrogated and why he's basically having to explain himself uh, throughout the film whilst following his actual biopic, his actual story. Mm. And I thought it was fascinating to just follow the insight and get in the mind set of the person that was building a, a weapon. You know, he was making a scientific breakthrough, but he also knew it was going to be a weapon that they were going to drop on Germany. But then, you know, watching them still get excited that they still get to drop it on Japan and then choose their targets. Uh, so there's some very bleak and dark moments in the film. Mm. Uh, but it was thoroughly enjoyable, very well acted, great cinematography, pacing, editing, everything. And the only issue I do have with Oppenheimer is the music score. Uh, I felt like the music score was way, way overdone. Uh, I, I actually said to Andy before we began the recording, I was like, I was laughing at certain parts in Oppenheimer because the music score just took me out of the moment uh, because uh, the, the would, Oppenheimer would just be walking or he'd just be in a car and he'd be walking into a building and he'd just be talking to somebody and you'd have this super aggressive tension building music I'm like he's just walking <laughs> into his car so calm down and, exactly, and then he gets in the car and the music's like oh nothing happened so blah, 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 and just goes quiet again and then five minutes later the music would be like nothing's happening in the film so Let's start making things tense again. It's Christopher Nolan, mate. There's always going to be something wrong with the sound. I mean, but it that... wasn't Hans Zimmer. Like, I expect it from no, Hans no. Zimmer, but it wasn't even Zimmer this time around. But yeah, I was just like, the, the movie could have been gone, could have done was a, better a with a lot more quieter yeah, there moments. There was some, there was some stretch out, but again, it's minor though, isn't it? Because I mean, it for is. Every, I mean, the, I loved, I loved where, the way they played off like the black and white versus the color, where it was yes. like first hand versus like you know second hand. It's like if Oppen if Oppenheimer was there for it, it was so he knew. That that happened, whereas like the the you know the black and white was more suggestive. Like that's how he assumed it went down, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, so yeah. it was still being told from his perspective. <clears throat> it was really clever, good movie, great performance from Robert Downey Jr. as well, because it was almost like, like I loved him as Tony Stark, obviously, but this is the first really big thing he's done since leaving the MCU. Spoilers, he died in Endgame, and um, <laughs> sorry, uh, what? But um, it, it was almost like, and I think he said it in a few interviews. Wrote, it was almost like him learning to act again. It's like him learning, like, oh yeah, I can do. There's no green screen. Yeah, I'm everywhere. not. I'm not. I'm <laughs> not just set. playing this fucking guy. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it was. It was great. I really did enjoy it. Noise. Awesome. And it flew by. I thought the pacing was actually really good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andy, do you want to bring up one of yours? We'll kind of bounce back and forth. Yeah, I've got sure, quite man. A few, I mean, uh, I um, I, I haven't really caught a lot of movies. More like you know, more TV shows. Um in this last month and we did talk about like we talked about Loki last month where both of us had tanked out after the first episode and I did yes. decide to re-persevere with it and I gotta say from the third episode it really picked up and actually caught me to the point where I really enjoyed the back end okay. of those last three episodes especially um, yeah for me I know the third episode was the one that I tapped it tapped out you on. out I know yeah but I really enjoyed Jonathan Majors as that version like 1800s him. Kang was fun um <laughs> Because I didn't, I didn't really enjoy him in Quantum Mania, um, as it, the way they did the character. I thought he was interesting at the end of the first season of Loki, but I mean, it's just him having it. It's just a one scene conversation. Um, it was a a really great example of long form character development for Loki. Okay. And well, it drew it drew what I it felt just was felt a like nice he line. He was the punchline for every episode so far, where he's not really growing. Yeah, I think that's where you need to catch those last that back end. Okay. So I think it's worth I think it's worth your time to to finish it. So I I did enjoy that. I'm one. A, a, how many episodes? Yeah. Like, it's only six. I'm, so I'm already halfway I mean, there. Exactly. I might you, as well halfway there, get to dude. the finish line. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was good. I mean, I watched. Um, uh, we talked about. Uh, I, 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 
what was it? I, I caught the new season of What We Do in the Shadows. That was I, I need to catch that up was with great. that. It was just it's just more of the same, but it's yeah. like the same as like all good, you know. Um, I'm surprised the longevity of the show. Really, I thought two seasons, three seasons. It's tops. got no right to just keep being. <laughs> it's, just, it's, <laughs> it's like it's just it's, it's still funny. It's still, yeah. it's still really good. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and uh, yeah, Ian, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> yeah, um, the um, I watched uh, Old Dads, that Bill Burr movie. Yeah, I watched it too. Uh, which I enjoyed. I thought it did like it did trail off a little bit towards the end. I thought it started it started on a, on quite a high and then did sort of trail off a bit. But I thought the performances were really good all the way through. Like those three characters, I, I, I agree enjoyed. That they they were mostly uh, dislikable characters mm. <laughs> for the most part. Uh, but I I did enjoy it. I I didn't hate it, but I I didn't love it either. It was. It was yeah. it was one of those films that for me just passed an afternoon quite nicely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I don't is. particularly watch a lot of Bill Burr stuff anyway, so well, I guess Stanford, knowing that right? it was written and directed <laughs> and starring him, uh, it really gave me a good you know idea of, of what he's like. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, the other one, I suppose before we go into like some of the video games and stuff like that, we um I I watched um a documentary on the WWE Network. I told you there'd be wrestling. Yeah, um, but you know what. I watched it too. Did you? Yeah, because I've been waiting for this documentary for like two years. Right. Because it was at the at one moment it was scheduled to come out on Peacock because I think yeah. WWE and Peacock have like rights so that some of their stuff gets put on there and then it, it just disappeared from their release schedule and wasn't even mentioned. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't know where the hell come out. is the super fan documentary? Yeah, is that it's, it? it's super yeah. fan the story of Vlad. <laughs> um, yeah. If. I mean, you know, we're in our forties. If you watch any WWE event from the from, golden era, from the golden era, from like the WrestleMania one onwards, any of those shows from those from that time, you know, through the eighties, anything, especially in New York, there is no way you did not see a guy in the same seat in the front row yelling louder than anyone else, very like well built guy and always in a tank top. And you were like all the way. I remember having this collection of like you know, say WrestleMania one to nine, and then the Survivor Series and the Summer Slams. And every time I'd be like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" He's ringside, like he's every show. all the time. He's there, <laughs> right? So it's a guy called Vladimir who's um, he's Haitian. Um, you know, he came over to uh, New York City when he was like six, I think. The same yeah, the documentary his mum yeah. came over, brought him over, and um, he's just he is literally a super fan. You know, there was rumor they discussed it in the documentary. Very, you know, it's talking heads documentary, but they do follow him around. And this was just before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, just talks about how he's like he's he had two loves in his life, and it was his mother and wrestling. And he lived in New York, and so he got to um, he got friendly with the guy who worked at the booth because it's the times when you used to have to physically walk Walking to the to venue buy a and go, "Can I have a ticket, please?" And yeah. he got friendly with the guys there, so they managed to get all the tickets. There was rumors that he was a plant, that he was Vince's trainer, bodyguard. that he was yeah. his bodyguard. There's all <laughs> these things. Even talking to like some of the guys there, like Bruce Pritchard, is like, is like, you know, oh, he's Russian, right? And they're like, no, he's Haitian. And he's like, his name's Vladimir. Right. <laughs> he's like, well, sorry, he's, he's Haitian. He's like, didn't even know that, you know. But he was such a fixture that, like, you know, uh, the wrestlers got to know him, didn't they? So it was all yeah. this footage of like the guy you're talking like back in the day. New York was the biggest territory. So, you know, like, you know, when Diesel, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, The Click, all that was really big. He was always um, uh, there when Bret Hart would give his glass out to a kid. Parents would hand their children to him because he's like, yeah. I'll get them those glasses. And he'd like call Bret over. They all, they all knew him and he'd hang out with them at the bars. He had pictures. The. M- memorabilia collection that he's got yeah it's... Alone. it's really hard because i i it's not touched on documentary he's speaking english he is subtitled though i i do think that he is on the spectrum i believe yeah, he's got because a speech impediment he certainly he, he certainly does strike you as like someone who's possibly on the spectrum but you know obviously you know works and lives his life but so I, I'm is like, has anyone ever explained to him? Do you think, like, do, when he's like, here's my memorabilia collection, like, dude, you're a millionaire and you don't even know it. Yeah. Because his memorabilia is not just, oh, look, I've got this t shirt that they released in 1980. It's like, here's the t shirt Shawn Michaels threw to me mm-hmm. this day in Madison Square Garden. Here's the one that Hulk Hogan gave me. It's like, yeah. it is, it's real life tactile history of the business. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's a really heartfelt story it's as well. It's an incredibly though. heartfelt story that hits you with a gut punch of emotion because of um, 
I mean, I guess I'm going to spoil it, but it's like, I mean, it's, it's not it's really spoiled. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like 37 or something like yeah, that, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, but basically, like you said, he's got two loves in his life. One's wrestling, one's his mother. And then the pandemic hits and he can't go to wrestling anymore. So that's gone. And then his mother dies. You know, he loses his mother. He loses wrestling. Can't do either. Yeah. And, you know, and there's, you know, without triggering people with talks about like trying to take his own life and everything like that. The, they reach out to him when they go back to right, WrestleMania 36, I think it was, um, and actually invite him there yeah. to be their guest. Triple it's, H. Oh, Triple H, isn't it? It's <laughs> There's a great moment where him and so Stephanie uplifting. give him uh, an super official fan award. super fan award, which absolutely amazing. It's, yeah, it's really amazing. so wonderful to see his, you know, his dedication paid off. And the company recognise him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, and he, and he just gets... He gets to sit there ringside at WrestleMania and the guy must be in his, like, maybe 50s or 60s. It's hard to tell, actually, how old he's, he is because he's, he's still old, in yeah. good shape. He's still in good shape, yeah. Still in good shape, but, you know, he's, he could be in his, like, 60s. Mm-hmm. If you if you put the video of him up at WrestleMania 36, next to the video of him when he's in his 20s at Magical Card, it's the same yeah. thing. He's still jump shouting and, like, you know, <laughs> he's got screaming all and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's such, it's so wonderful, and it's yeah. like, and it, and it boosts the heels, and you know, and cheers absolutely, the faces. Yeah. and it, and it just shows you why it's like, even if you don't like a particular sport, you can completely understand fandom, yeah, yeah, of anything, if yeah. it means that much to you. So yeah, it's if you've got the network, it's on there. If not, I'm sure you can find it online. It, it's less than forty minutes of your time, yeah, and it's a brilliant documentary. Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. Hell yeah. Alrighty, well, going from documentaries to video games, just want to do. Uh, I haven't finished the game yet. I'm very early. I'm gonna play the game, this. I need to play this. I just want to talk very quickly about RoboCop Rogue City. It's a first-person shooter game developed by Taeon. It's the same uh, team that put together Terminator Resistance and uh, Rambo 2014, the on-the-rail shooter game, which <laughs> they got was universally they, 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 panned. Yeah, they clearly love a certain type of. So yeah, they're literally just doing movie adaptations of, you know, our nostalgic, you know, some of our favorite movies, Rambo, Terminator, Robocop. Uh, But I will say that playing uh, playing Robocop Rogue City, you couldn't imagine it was the same team that made Rambo. Mm. Uh, But I could tell it was the same team that did Terminator Resistance because even though Terminator Resistance was janky and it was kind of broken, it was a game that the developers kept patching and updating. They re-released the game earlier this year with all the DLC you know, they remastered it or, or whatever, and they kept working on it to make it a, f- a fun experience. And uh, it might not be the best Terminator game ever, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I uh, I liked their attention to details, the music, the lighting. They got that blue James Cameron hue. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it felt and it looked the part. Robocop Rogue City is no exception. They've taken that all the way with some really good visuals. Some of the textures aren't as you know detailed as you'd expect from a triple a game it's a budget game mm. but the fact that they've also got peter weller reprising his role as murphy as robocop for me that was an instant i'm in like peter weller is back does not feel like the most important part yes, of the puzzle as well it absolutely does it absolutely like it does. could it could have been better graphically than it is and yeah. it, i've not played it but i'm just saying like it just makes sense to say it could be better graphically than it is it could play smoother it could have better say gameplay innovations but if it was someone else voicing it, Peter Weller's character I, I you, this purchase. ain't as good this, no. ain't, this isn't as good yeah, yeah. exactly like, it's a phony it's not it's not the real Robocop and they, yeah, they yeah, are yeah. basing it in the Robocop timeline as the third entry oh, it's just like, where, where the does third it movie sit? After, oh. after Robocop 2 oh, they're, they're smart uh, okay, so cool. uh, it has some of the so we've beaten, very, very we've beaten lightly Fleetwood Mac we has... just need to move on <laughs> from that it's all good it has some satire uh, carried on over from the movies, but not that much. Hmm. The gameplay is very slow. Robocop is a, wa- it's a, a walking, slow moving. It's a tank. walking shooter, isn't it's it? It's a yeah. walking shooter. You're not running to get behind cover and that's good though, play it, as it should be. You are a tank. You take yeah. the shots and then you line up your shots. And the gunplay is very, very satisfying. It feels old school, mm. you know. And the gun is loud. And when you hit enemies, their heads or their body parts explode into gory chunks or spray across the walls as paper goes flying everywhere. Love it. Uh, I'm, I'm early days into it, so I can't give it a full review, but I can't wait to uh, to continue playing I'm, it. I'm going to be picking this one up probably next week. Like I, I'm going to be a bit of a tit and wait to see if it comes down on Black Friday. Um, yeah. But I'm going I'm going to be getting this, so I'll, I'll be having this one played by the end of the year for sure. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's definitely one I would say to play. I don't know. If, I don't know if it'll be in your top ten of the year for mm. games, but uh, definitely uh, a recommendation if you love RoboCop. 
the original movie. Oh, as soon as I saw the trailer, I was like, yeah, this looks totally, totally yeah. playable. Awesome. Right, cool, man. Next game I want to talk about is Dungeons 4, the fourth entry in this long-running dungeon dungeon management simulator series developed by Realm Forge Studios. Uh, <clears throat> players will assemble a cozy and comfortable dungeon to suit their creatures' needs <laughs> and then rule over them. It also has co-op uh, dungeon building and overworld hero conquering gameplay. Uh, it's great fun. Lots of light-hearted humor storytelling. And I would say it is a good spiritual successor to the Dungeon Keeper series of games. Uh, really good fun. So, yeah, enjoying this one. Uh, I think I'm on, like, chapter 11 of just under 20 chapters, I think there are. Nice. Great gameplay, though. And it's also free on Game Pass. Nice. Uh, I finally also caught up with Fear the Walking Dead. Its final, final ever uh, season is... Two episodes. I think the final two episodes actually air tomorrow night as of recording this. And uh, and I have to say, it's been a wobbly, a wibbly wobbly final season <laughs> as they brought back characters that haven't been in since season three because they were killed off, off screen. But now they're back. Uh, but they're like, oh, but Morgan is the center of the walking, of fear of the walking dead now. So we'll take this final season and we'll do half the season on Morgan and finished off that story and then the second half of the final season back on telling this story carrying on over from season two and three so it's very split down the middle um i have to say most of my favorite characters have already died in fear of the walking dead so it's limping along it's about to go over its finish line i'm gonna be there for it um i'm hoping for a bit of spectacle in its final final uh, arc um, and for some closure for these characters, because I don't see, I don't believe many of the characters from Fear of the Walking Dead are getting spin-off shows like those from the main cast. Negan so. and Maggie yeah, is from the main cast, isn't it? Dead so. City, Daryl, and of course... Um, oh, of course, Daryl, uh, yeah. The ones who live, which uh, we're going to get some more Rick and Michonne stories as well. So I think uh, The Ones Who Live is like the seventh spin-off show of the main show. I love it. I'm a Walking Dead super fan. You don't think he's jumped the shark at this point? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the quality is mediocre. Fuck this shark! <laughs> Where's Jason stay from? Let's punch this bitch. Uh, I'm still enjoying uh, some of the storytelling and some of the characters and uh, the world building as it keeps moving forward in the apocalypse. So I'm still there. And uh, I, I hope, but I do hope uh, it gets better. Uh, but obviously fear, even if it gets better, it's over. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm still excited for more of the shows. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, so it's talking about um games though. Yeah. So obviously, obviously, I played Spider Man Two. Yeah. So I played uh, anyone I with did, a PlayStation. I didn't I think play Spider Man Two. I fucking platinum Spider Man Two because <laughs> I had 27 hours free. Of course. Um, so we're going to talk about this in January. I've had no doubt because it was uh, it was stellar. Um, Few criticisms that I that, that have come out about it didn't make a big deal to me, to be honest. A lot of people did cite the playthrough time, like literally. I mean, when I like I platinumed it, it wasn't a hard platinum or anything like that. Okay. But I it wasn't did like a everything. Ubisoft did, the, the platinum trophy really for that kind of thing is it's like it's like do every activity in the um, game, and there wasn't there wasn't a huge amount of collectibles like there was for like the backpacks previously and stuff. But like I said, I probably finished the storyline in say twenty three of those 27 hours and then mm -hmm. the rest was just me farting around doing stuff you know <laughs> very good um, yeah but the um the st okay so gameplay new york looks amazing as usual you know the gameplay is phenomenal um again a few people like i uh, like prefer the web slinging in like say going back to web of shadows so i love the spider-man games you know what i mean i think like as a as a superhero I think he's part. He's probably the most perfect superhero to translate to a video game okay. because of the nature of it, because of the traversal, the combat, all the different elements make for a great video game experience. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so, Web of Shadows, Web Slinging is it like you know is it better? I prefer the Spider-Man two one, but also there are settings you can change to make it more like the Web of Shadows, where it is a bit more realistic and basically a bit more difficult because a lot of it is kind of like yeah just auto swinging yeah um but you know now you've got like web wings in it and stuff you start gliding through the city there's all these <laughs> points to hit oh it's like butter it's amazing uh nice. the story the story itself i think is, again the i've said from the first one i think even if you don't play it I mean, if you're in the position where like you know because it's console exclusive where you can't play it 
watch the story watch a playthrough of just the story the clips okay. from all of them because i love the story in the first one this one is it's i'm like why aren't the films like this you watch it and you're like this this is better than the film <laughs> this is really annoying <laughs> damn <laughs> that, that is better than the live writing. action movie dude. i think it is a really well written one um, I think the uh, choice of the villains in it were crazy. I'm not spoiling anything because everyone's seen the trailers. If you're interested in it, is like uh, you know obviously Craven coming into it. Craven's great in it. Obviously Venom is like just man. You get to play as Venom for a bit in this game. You actually Damn. get to take over Venom. Um, <laughs> there's uh, the biggest um, criticism of the original game was the Mary J. Watson um, sections where it was like a stealth gameplay. Okay. And I mean, yeah, it's risky because I didn't mind it. I didn't. I wouldn't say that I enjoyed it. It was definitely my low point of the original game. But um, the um, the stealth gameplay, it's just it's hard going from like this really exciting gameplay, and you have like a stealth version when you're playing Spider Man, similar okay. to the Batman, the Predator takedowns thing, and that yeah, you know where yeah. you can go in like that. So to then just drop down to this on ground, it feels very slow. All of a sudden, you know, it's it's quite risky. You this sure? one, they still had mary jane sections in it but they'd upped her a bit you know she's a bit of a tank in this she's probably overpowered actually she's got like a stun gun and she's taking out craven's like you know highly trained hunters i'm a bit like mm. well i'm having fun though so i don't care because that's, that's the main reason to play a video yeah game. so yeah yeah i i two big thumbs up for, for everything about spider-man 2 for me i loved it um i also played the resident evil 4 remake also on the playstation 5 yeah that's how you do a remake, isn't it? it oh, absolutely just, is. Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, I'm going to get the, the DLC next week, probably. Yeah, separate ways um, is good. And a good price what? point, too. Very good. I think I paid 30 quid for it. What, for the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, wow, even better. Yeah. yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I think it's on sale right now in the early uh, the early sales. But, um, yeah, I got a physical copy of it, and it, it, was, it was fucking brilliant. It was all there from the original. Everything they that I remembered was there. They trimmed out some of the fat and but it, some of the Yeah, but that's what I mean. They just... They just yeah, they just trimmed it out and they made it one of the most fun action games ever. Yeah. Really uh, ever. Great soundtrack, brilliant visuals, great gameplay. Looks amazing. Yeah. Does look like Village, which I think I've said before. Yeah. I was playing it going... This Did they really... reuse some assets here and uh, there? Oh, there's some colours that were reused, I think. Not that it mattered. It didn't detract at all. No. Um, the, the, the mini boss fights that they littered through it now, you know... Yeah were absolutely so much fun you know to play every single one of them definitely um, a highlight of the year for me as well yeah it, it's a, and also they managed to make ashley not an annoying ai yeah i really like the, the voice acting work yeah, yeah and like just she don't get in your way at least now you, yeah. there's a way to control her to keep her out of your face because that's always that that can kill a game for me yeah. an annoying ai it was Luis who managed to get in the way more than not true actually. yeah 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 <laughs> so that was um, i haven't played mercenaries on it or anything i need to give that a that's go good because, fun yeah, yeah i can imagine just because of the speed of the gameplay and everything like that i did find myself like rattling through it kind yeah. of thinking like resident evil Dude, village a... had bad mercenaries yeah that yeah made me angry yeah absolutely and the yeah this one you do feel like you know you get surrounded but if you're tooled up you do suddenly feel like I'm a fucking machine yeah, like, Leon's yeah. a badass dude right? from going and having the worst like first day on the job of anyone ever suddenly he's like an absolute, absolute badass yeah. so I enjoyed that um, I'm also going to blame these two games for the controversial opinion that I'm now going to give you oh. which because I moved on to another game that was released this year that yeah. I wanted to play which was Dead Space, the oh, remake. Oh, Dead Space remake. Awesome. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. I fucking didn't. Oh. I loved the original. I don't know what was going on. I, I loved the original Dead Space. Played the first, I never played the third one. Uh, but It's probably loved, for the best. Which, which is all I've heard from everyone. So I'm like, <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to leave it as a it good... Has an interesting sto- it has some interesting so, story beats and gameplay. Points, well, I just, but, yeah, it's overall. the whole thing about how it was kind of like, you know, fucking jabbed out as in, we want this in co-op and yeah, you need to well, yeah. utilise this, I think, for And three. microtransactions and other yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, Look, I was a fan so of the what? first two Death Space. This is the this is the problem. I think the worst thing I could have done was move from a, a third person game that plays as fast as Resident Evil Four and Spider Man yeah. to then play Dead Space and be like, this this feels like the slowest gameplay of anything I've ever played. It felt like so tanky. It was like playing the original Resident Evil again or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it felt. Now, also, again, because I've just played Resident Evil 4, which I think may be the best remake of See, all time, I did maybe. Dead Space, then Resident Evil 4. That's what so I should have done. A... <laughs> That's what I should have done. Yeah. Because I just, I was like, I was like, the ship is, just, there's no variation in the ship. It just, every corridor looked the same to me, as far as I was concerned. 
Every enemy felt the same to me. I, I thought there was definitely a, a feel to the biodomes of the different locations, the decorations, well, the posters, <sighs> the, the the levels of degradation to the ship as the the, the hive a little was bit, taking it over. A little bit. Okay. Well, I mean, full disclosure, I got six chapters through it, yeah. which I think is about halfway. I think Almost it's about twelve halfway, chapters. Yeah. yeah. And I was just, I can't do this anymore. I'm just, I'm feeling nothing. I wasn't. It wasn't scaring me. Well, I. I took it as a personal fucking insult as well. The fact that... So, as I'm playing it, and obviously, they've given Isaac dialogue in this one. Yes. I was like, oh, shit, that's cool. And they've brought in the actual voice actor. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's, that's really great. cool. Yeah. Great. And we got to a scene where I met up with... Oh, what's his name? The guy, the the, the other guy. That, you know, like, <laughs> see, again, this is... it's a, Hammond. Hammond, yeah, yeah. Meet up with Hammond. And Isaac takes his helmet off mm -hmm. as they're conversing. And so I'm like spinning the camera around like you do. And then like you, I'm on Isaac's face and it's like, it's like, oh, you have as many expressions on your face with your helmet off as you do <laughs> on. Like what the fuck was even the point? It looks so, it just looks so ridiculous. And I just found that every, every encounter just felt the same with the weaponry that I had. It was just the same kind of one, two punch of like, mm -hmm. hit this stasis, hit that, drop this. You know, there's a fucking proximity mine. Bing, bang, boom. Or was that room done? Okay, great. I'll move on. I will give it, I like the fact that they used the God of War mechanism of it's a perpetual game. It doesn't load. No loading There's screens, no yeah. loading. Again, that was a big, like, I read a thing where it was such a huge thing. I'm like, yeah, we have had this since like 2018, but okay. True, whatever. Yeah. whatever. But it's new to them and it, and it did make for a different experience. But I, I just think I, I kind of, I kind of fucked myself. By playing I le hey, listen, chat, I knew you weren't going to like this. <laughs> I knew you weren't going to like this. <laughs> All right. But I got to tell the truth. I, w I wish I could say that I, I I was really enjoying it, but most I found myself saying "fuck this game" so many times that I decided <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it off. So that so then I thought I'll try another new game, and uh, I started playing Gotham Knights. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's like uh, the uh, spin off from the the Arkham universe, okay. I guess, or um, or not even from the Arkham universe, but it's the Batman universe where it's the Bat family where you can play as Nightwing, Batgirl, okay, uh, Red Hood. Uh, a, a hour and a half, I turned that off. It was fucking shit. Oh. It was like, just the <laughs> combat was terrible. It's just yeah. the gameplay was really shit, and it's a shame because it started with a really cool cinematic, even though the, graphically it wasn't fantastic. Like there was some really ropey sort of like movement in the character models, but like you know, Batman's fighting Ra's al Ghul in the Batcave, and like they have this really like quite badass fight, and that's how he ends. You know, he dies, and then he obviously brings the Bat family into like take over looking after Gotham and just like a little sure. a little bit of um, gameplay. And I was just like, this this is just this is. Mum, can we have Arkham Asylum? We have Arkham Asylum at home. It was like, <laughs> oh, this is so bad. So to the point where when they actually said, oh, we're we're doing a remaster of Arkham Asylum next year, I actually went, good. <laughs> it's a good game. Fucking good. Uh, well, I'm so, sure yeah. we'll be uh, talking about Dead Space I'm again come January. I'm sorry about the uh, Dead we'll Space lovers, guys. all the reasons why it was so amazing. Hey, I, you know, <laughs> listen, do you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll go back to it at some maybe, point next yeah. year, but I... Yeah, I got after after the other two games, especially after the Resident Evil remake. Yeah, I was just like, "Oh, this is shit!" Like, <laughs> just Damn. so bad. I'm sorry, I can't help with that. <laughs> well, we're getting ready to move into the new segment, but I'm just going to quickly blitz through some of the things I wanted to uh, to catch up and give a quick mini review on. Uh, I got to see the Creator, which came out this year, 2023, oh, uh, from director this. Gareth Edwards, who had done Godzilla, Monsters, Rogue One. Um, the premise is against the backdrop of a war between humans and robots with artificial intelligence. Uh, a former soldier finds the secret weapon, a robot, in the form of a young child, and he eventually is tasked with protecting her whilst the government is basically attacking this uh, new Asia, who are basically like a refuge for AI, which the rest mm. of the country or the world is trying to destroy because AI dropped an atomic bomb on L.A., so which sparked a war. So that, the world building is awesome. The storytelling is fine. Uh, there's lots of jump arounds in terms of the story, but the pace is good. They never stay in one location for very long because the bad guys basically turn up and start shooting everything. Um, but yeah, the, the robotics, the artificial intelligence, the special effects, the music, the pacing and the performances were all really good. It's a story that you've seen before, but with a fresh coat of paint. So I, 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 I do recommend it. I would give it a 7 out of 10. I do want to see that. It does look yeah. good. Try to look good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next film that I got to watch was uh, You Should Have Left. 
Uh, this was a film that had been on my to watch list for quite some time. This one came out in 2020 from writer director David Cope. Uh, who was the writer for Spider-Man 2002, Jurassic Park 1993, Mission Impossible 1996. He was also the director for Ghost Town, uh, the Ricky Gervais movie, yeah. and uh, Star of Echoes. And I thought that was funny because after I looked it up afterwards, as I was watching, you should have left. I was like, this is like Star of Echoes, but not as good. <laughs> also stars Kevin Bacon. So, of course, my Star of Echoes is really like obvious, Star of Echoes. Yeah. Uh, but also stars uh, Amanda Seyfried. Uh, both of them were really good. It was a decent psychological thriller, uh, but for me, it kind of ran out of steam before the end. So I would give this one a 5 out of 10. It's not bad. It's just average. Uh, the basic premise of the, he's a banker. His wife is an actress. I think she's doing porn. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he turns actress. up on set and he can hear her faking it somewhere in the distance and they won't let him on the set. Uh, but the two of them take a break and they go to this giant house uh, in Wales and whilst they're there, things start to unravel. And you'll see the sort of Star of Echoes sort of references. But yeah, it's a psychological thriller. Yeah, 5 out of 10. It was okay, but not great. Cobweb from 2023 this year from director Samuel Bowden. Uh, the only other thing I could see that he had done was Marianne, uh, a Netflix show. which was also really highly rated. Uh, the story of Cobweb follows an eight-year-old boy as he tries to investigate the mysterious knocking sounds that are coming from inside the walls of his house, uh, unveiling a dark secret that his sinister parents have kept hidden from him. It stars Lizzie Kaplan, Anthony Starr, and Woody Norman, and also Cleopatra Coleman and a very young Luke Boosie. There's another Boosie in the acting scene. Oh, my God. But it's not, <laughs> it's not Jake Boosie's son. It's Gary Boosie's son. And this kid is like 12. So it's like, where the, I thought it was Gary Boosie's son. I had to check. Oh so, my dear. God. Uh, but I have to say, this was an absolutely awesome Halloween film. It's one of those films that I would say watch during Halloween. So much Halloween imagery from from pumpkins to the the candy, the the lighting, the mood, everything about it. When screams did this come Halloween. Out? Uh, it came out, I think, like middle of the year. Is this on Netflix or? It's not on Netflix. Oh, okay. Now. That's, was, how did this get by me for Halloween? Yeah, it, it literally it came out um, came out early on in the year. Didn't get much fanfare. It did very badly uh, at the box office, um, and so now it's oh, yeah, it's it just even got streaming. a cinematic release as well. It did get oh, a cinematic okay. release, but I'll, it didn't I'll give do that well. a go though. That sounds good. I highly highly rate this yeah. one. Uh, I this one is definitely going to be a contender. I think for my top ten of this year. Uh, as uh, and and as a good example of modern day horror good movies movie. still being really really good, great atmosphere, cool effects, great pace, good horror imagery, and some surprising levels of gore. I've heard in the in the reviews a lot of people uh, zoned out of the film during its final in its third act because it does hit Evil Dead levels of of silliness and gore, uh, whereas everything else had been slow and claustrophobic and building up to what is the voice or the thing knocking in the walls. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I absolutely was. It was a thrill ride for me. Really enjoyed this one. Mm. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys get to check that one out too. Last one I want to talk about. Um, oh, I was for Cobweb. I would give it an eight, eight out of ten. That one, uh, The Wrath of Becky, which came mm. out this year, twenty twenty three, uh, from writers directors Matt Angel and Suzanne Coote. Uh, Lulu Wilson is back as the titular character of Becky. This time facing off against Sean William Scott. You know. Stifler. Stifler's back. <laughs> exactly. This time he's playing Daryl, a very dangerous neo-Nazi with very deadly <laughs> plans. Um, I'd say this one here is so much more tongue-in-cheek than the first one. It no longer has the realism edge of the first. It feels very comic book in its style and its nature with like fourth wall breaks, etc. It's got some good gags and, uh, and uh, a quirky tone to it, despite sort of, you know, the bloodshed that gets spilt. Uh, I think it actually made The Wrath of Becky better than than its original film. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. And as it was ending, I was like, there needs to be a follow-up. There needs to be a third <laughs> one. And I looked at the moment the film finished, I looked it up and they were like, if this one does well enough, we've already got an idea for the third film. So like, brilliant. This is going to be an awesome trilogy. Uh, I would also give The Wrath of Becky a high 7 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. Alrighty, sorry to quickly burn through those ones. No, cool, Any others on catch up? Nah, mate, that's about it, to be honest. Like I said, I've been crazy busy. Yeah, well, let's get into the news. 
Sadly, during this part, we always like to commemorate and say goodbyes to those in uh, the media that have influenced uh, it in any way. And this goes without exception, as I want to bring up Richard Roundtree, who has passed away at the age of 81. A wonderful actor, will be remembered by uh, many generations, with his most popular character, the private detective, John Shaft. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Richard Roundtree uh, Shaft. He uh, cool, uh, played Shaft in 1971 as a breakout performance, which led to several sequels and a short-lived TV show in 1973. Uh, Roundtree actually has over 150 credits on IMDb from TV shows, movies, and voice work for video games. Uh, I also loved his appearance in Q the Winged Serpent, a Maniac Cop, Blood Fist 3, Forced to Fight, and he had a small role in Seven as well. Uh, Samuel Jackson also had Dust Till Dawn. this to say. Dust Till Dawn, yeah. Come yeah. on, Sex Machine. Yeah, fucking Great. awesome. Um, Samuel Jackson, I think also. I never actually saw the Samuel Jackson Shaft movie, but did he play like son of Shaft or something? No, they did a sequel where he it had his son. Ah, right, yeah. right. Uh, but yeah, Richard Roundtree. This is the words of Samuel Jackson. Richard Roundtree, the prototype, the best to ever do it. Shaft as we know it. Uh, as we know it is and will always be his creation. His passing leaves a deep hole not only in my heart, but I'm sure a lot of y'all's too. Love you, brother. I see you walking down the middle of Main Street in heaven and Isaac's conducting your song. Mm -hmm. Coat blowing in the wind, angels whispering, the cat Shaft is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. And talking about Shaft, then we can dig it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, also, sadly, and this one has kind of really dominated uh, the news as well, is that Matthew Perry has passed away at the age of 54. Uh, uh, quite a shock uh, in the industry, really. Best known as Chandler Bing on the NBC sitcom Friends from 1993. Uh, he quickly became a household name, along with all of his Friends co-stars, and the show lasted 10 seasons. Perry also had great success in the film, uh, film world with the whole nine yards serving Sarah, uh, but he mostly worked uh, on TV with appearances like on Scrubs, The West Wing, Ally McBeal, and The Simpsons. And Fallout 76. Fallout 76, exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, Matthew Perry's death has seen a lot of news coverage lately, mainly due though to, I guess, the mysterious and sudden nature of his passing. Uh, the death report apparently has deemed inconclusive and not drug related. Uh, Matthew Perry actually released his book last year. Uh, called Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, where Matthew Perry actually explains his addictions uh, and his personal battles and how he hoped to help others now battle addiction. Um, so I just want to also say cheers to yeah, Matthew man. Perry. You will be missed uh, by, by many for all of the laughs yeah, you brought from this world. very outspoken about his alcoholism, like in a very brave way, to be fair. Very, so, yeah. 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 All righty. Uh, first news story I want to bring up. Uh, I've talked about this film a couple of times. I mentioned this news story in a couple of podcasts ago. Uh, but Fall, uh, that came out in 2022, and we got an update on its sequel. Uh, Capstone Studios has greenlit not one, but two sequels. Uh, the first film was made on a small budget of just $3 million. Uh, it streamed on Netflix in the UK while earning more than $20 million, uh, in America. Uh, Scott Mann, who co-wrote and directed the first film, will be back for both film sequels, uh, which fe will feature some returning cast members. Some of them fell to their deaths uh, <laughs> and introducing new ones. Uh, Mann said, I'm thrilled to be continuing the full They're journey. still returning. You'll see them on the <laughs> They're still down. falling. <laughs> <laughs> Just a cameo appearance. No. <laughs> A man said, I'm thrilled uh, to be continuing the full journey and taking it to the next level. Uh, he said, we've got a really special cinematic experience planned. And I'm immensely grateful to my fellow producers for backing the vision. I'm also excited to be working with new collaborators as well as reuniting with the old gang. And obviously can't wait to be back filming thousands of feet up in the air. Fall 2, whether or not it features the, the family of a slain vulture from the original movie. Coming back to get some revenge. We don't know yet. Just like the shark. <laughs> right. Uh, but it is scheduled to shoot in June next year. So might not be seeing that one next year. But it uh, depends on how quick production goes. But yeah, I'm very excited for this one. As someone who also has a fear of heights, that film, I almost turned it off and couldn't finish it. Because mm -hmm. it was that effective. So I don't know how, how they're going to top it. Now, here's a new story that you might need to hear twice just to know that it is happening. <laughs> Barbenheimer is now going to be an actual film. It is currently in pre-production 
over at Full Moon Features with Charles Band, who wishes to deliver some dark humour going into 2024. So I'll say that again in case you do need to actually believe that it is true. Barbenheimer, the movie, is in development at Full Moon Pictures, the same studio that made the Puppet Master films, the Evil Bong films, the Trancers and Subspecies movies. They are making Barbenheimer. I'll just say that for the third and final time. <laughs> Barbenheimer, the movie. <laughs> the tagline for the film is D-Cup, A-Bomb. That's actually quite clever. <laughs> right? That might be the best joke of the whole thing, unfortunately. <laughs> With a story that follows Dr. Bambi J. Barbenheimer, a brilliant scientist doll living in Dolltopia, a world of endless summers and beach parties, and her boyfriend, Twink Dollman. Dr. Barbenheimer, incensed by the brutal treatment the dolls receive at the hands of human children, ventures into the real world where she experiences humanity at its worst and naturally decides to build a giant nuclear bomb to wipe out all of humanity. Charles Band has said it's 100% true. It's also an opportunity to have fun with the bizarre coupling of these two movies and the combination of Barbie's vibe and the darkness of Oppenheimer. You mix that together and you have such an opportunity for dark humour. Man, I'm <laughs> excited for a movie of 2024. See, you're seriously telling me that <laughs> just it's... a film studio can go, we're basically going to take two IPs and make an entire movie about them. Yes. And Paramount are fucking pissed at you for putting <laughs> a couple of still shots up on a fucking YouTube channel. <laughs> um, oh, so, man. There we go. Uh, I, I think we said before we came on the bus, like, this is, this is a... <laughs> A cocaine fueled conversation. Right. So, you ever seen the guys who do like the shorts where they do like right mad libs for a fucking like Iron Man scene? Like, okay, so who's he fighting? <laughs> this guy. And what's the reason? That. Okay, go with it. Like, that's, that is how this came about. <laughs> Unbelievable. But Indeed. believe it because it's real. <laughs> yeah. So, it's fuck. Now, here's another story that I'm kind of glad like uh, that some more news has dropped because uh, it originally was going to be some bad news. I was very excited earlier in the year uh, announcing Coyote versus Acme. Uh, and uh, it was recently reported that Warner Brothers have shelved the completed film for yet another tax write off, as they had done with Batgirl and uh, Scoob Holiday Haunt. Both films completed, then written off, Bend. vaulted, never to see the light of day. Uh, Dave Green directed Coyote vs. Acme with James Gunn as a producer starring John Cena who would play a lawyer who tries to sue Acme on behalf of Wiley Coyote as all the Acme products have failed him in his pursuit for Roadrunner. Now apparently the film tested really, premise. really well. It's a great premise. Great audience reactions to it and it was slated for a theatrical release. Uh, and then going to streaming afterwards, but it was silently removed. No trailer, nothing, just written off. Just held up a sign. That said, exactly. That yeah. Said, Ouch. Yeah. And then it just <laughs> right, went. Just gone. <laughs> uh, but there has been a lot of fan backlash because a lot of people were tentatively excited for this because it's live action and animation. Uh, but there's been such a vocal backlash that Warner Brothers has gone ash yet. Okay. Well, who wants to buy it from us then? Somebody else buy it, and you can you can distribute it or put it theatrically or put it on your streaming network now apparently it looks like amazon amazon prime studios or amazon film studios are the first ones to put in the highest bid so far and uh, honestly it just feels like an absolutely daft move by warner brothers considering the backlash has been so vocal i think this would be a hit a lot of people when they found out that this film was being shelved well the backlash is forced it out of the vault potentially yeah. it's not out all the way yet so i'll keep uh, uh keeping updated on the developments of this one but yeah uh coyote versus acme as soon as i bring it up to someone the reaction you had that's the same reaction i'm getting everywhere totally. when people are like, i've never heard of this that sounds that, wonderful that sounds like such a great dumb movie to watch on a sunday with your family doesn't it Just absolutely like, oh, absolutely on, so yeah like <laughs> yeah we're getting a, yet we're getting a prequel ted series <laughs> <laughs> next new story uh, I'm going to talk about Mike Flanagan some more. Because uh, at first I was just he like... He is the man. He is oh, the man. like all of the shows he's done for Netflix have been fantastic. But his contract with Netflix has ended. 
And I guess Amazon, Amazon Prime, Amazon Film Studios have, I guess, poached him. Mm. They're like, we'll pay you. Well, how much do you want? Come and make some shows for us. Because, well, we've kind of got The Boys and Invincible and and we've cancelled almost everything else. And that's and it. Rings of Power was yeah, bad. Lord of the Rings didn't go the well. Time was bad. <laughs> like, we need some we need some good creators. Uh, so Mike Flanagan has now got a new contract over at Amazon. And he's already... Uh, well underway working on a Stephen King adaptation mentioned this a while back mm. uh, The Life of Chuck which has a you know to be determined release date uh, but they have just cast Loki Tom Hiddleston to play Chuck with Mark Hamill confirmed to be playing uh, Albie nice. so I'm like brilliant like already Mike Flanagan's like yeah Mark Hamill keep keep working with me keep working with Mike that's great because he always brings uh, similar familiar actors so very happy with this uh, but yeah other than a Stephen King adaptation some of you will know one of my favorite book series of all time is The Dark Tower. Uh, absolutely adore that series of books. Love Stephen King for it, the world he created. And I was, you, you'll know how disappointed and upset I was with the abysmal Dark Tower movie that we got. Uh, and so, considering the potential of this property, I'm now super, super uh, psyched because it has officially landed in Mike Flanagan's lap. Apparently, Stephen King just went, no, 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 I'm not selling you the rights to the life of Chuck. You're doing the Dark Tower. Mm. Uh, but apparently, Mike Flanagan had to convince, had to sit down with Stephen King and, and convince him, I can do both. I can spin those plates yeah. at the same time. I'm going to make this adaptation whilst still working on the Dark Tower and working out the entire length of all the seasons that it's going to be to do a faithful adaptation of that source material mm. i am beyond excited this will be the number one thing of all time for me personally so yeah i'm very very excited uh, mike flanagan actually said to uh, fangoria's king cast podcast that the project is in a good place despite the current writer strike saying i feel really good about where we are and adding i have every reason to believe that on the other side of this strike, it's going to be priority one. So the strikes are over in America. Yeah, the so actor strike, go. the writer strike. So all I can do now is just dream about this future uh, project. We might not see it for a couple of years yet, but it's moving forward. So I'm, I'm super happy. <laughs> Can't be any worse than that fucking movie. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, we've got some quick fire news for you. Uh, Darren Aronofsky, another director would I absolutely adore, has mm. signed on to direct an Elon Musk biopic for A24 Productions. Who cares? <laughs> A very polarizing figure, uh, if not one of the wealthiest person in the world, with influence in social media, space travel, politics... You know, now I love Aronofsky films, and it'll got, be interesting to see. Got that Cybertruck coming out in the next month, I think. So there's that. More, more Tesla stuff. You've got the ugliest car in the world <laughs> coming out. I, I love Aronofsky movies, so it'll be interesting to see what the focus will be. I think it'll be an interesting movie, it'll whether you like good, it or yeah, not. Yeah, it'll probably be interesting because it's Aronofsky, but it's just yeah, it's like just straight away in the chat. It's like, exactly. Why? Just who who was asking for that? Like, yeah. Just, no, I, all I can see is like I don't know if Elon Musk is like get like. I'd love knows. it if like if it was like Elon Musk was like working on it with him and he just fabricates it and makes it <laughs> mental. Do you know it's what I mean? Like, like, it's, a like it's like a fever dream. Right? Like literally, I'd be like, Do you know, actually, this, yeah, it's quite good. It's funny. <laughs> I don't know. I I I kind of guess like from Aronofsky's perspective, I'm like, what's the angle here? Because he tells human stories yeah, very, very well. Yeah, he's not a director that just signs on to do like, yeah, I'll take that script and just run with it. Yeah, it's, so I'm like, mm. what's the angle here? So I'm kind of I kind of interested, I guess, just to see the psychology of the wealthiest person on the planet and what he does. But buys, I, I guess buys we'll Twitter. See. He buys Twitter and whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. Sucks, whatever yeah. he wants. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, next uh, quick fire bit of news. And a little bit of a correction here. In the last podcast, I read the synopsis for Terrifier 3 when actually I read the, <laughs> re -read the synopsis for Terrifier 2. Which we were just which like, Which is hey, what confused us when we said, sounds awful familiar. <laughs> yeah. But the, the teaser, ta teaser trailer has dropped. Uh, Terrifier 3 will be releasing in October next year, even though it's a Christmas movie. 
It's releasing in October next year, so I guess it's going to slay it, Halloween it, it, and Christmas it, it's going, at the it's, same time. It's, it's going to be out it's in October. It's doing Nightmare Before Christmas and vibes. And stay, is. Yeah. The end, like, for two months, right? <laughs> la, 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 <laughs> la. Uh, I mean, this this small horror franchise Kidding now has mainstream uh, attention. Even Stephen King has come out and said, uh, he tweeted that it's grossing you out old school. Uh, the New York Times actually said Terrifier 2, the little horror movie that could. Mm. You know, also calling it the most talked about horror movie uh, of Halloween. So, yeah, without a doubt, Art the Clown has quickly gone all the way up there in the ranks of you know, horror icons. Um, so yeah, very excited for the third one. It's going to make all the money. Terminator, now an anime series coming soon to Netflix. Tried the, everything else. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, developed by the same Japanese animation studio that produced Ghost in the Shell, uh, Production IG will release eight episodes of the first season that will focus on all new characters in the Terminator universe. Uh, John Derian uh, Netflix vice president of animation series added, Terminator is one of the most iconic sci-fi stories ever created and has only grown more relevant to our world over time. The new animated series will explore this universe in a way that has never been done before. We can't wait for fans to experience this amazing new chapter in the epic battle between machines and humans. Listed as coming soon, no actual release date yet. So, well, speaking of Terminator, we're going to segue into James Cameron. James Cameron's The Abyss returns in cinemas with a 4K remaster. Cameron has said, if you haven't seen the film before, this is the way to experience it. And if you have <laughs> seen the film, no shit. this is the film I actually <laughs> set out to make. Uh, he says that there's going to be some big surprises not seen in the original or extended cuts of the film before. So new scenes, new effects, new creatures. We don't know yet. He's keeping it secret. Um, but uh, he says, uh, we hope you take advantage of seeing The Abyss, his first ocean film, back in theatres. Now, this is only showing for one night only, on December 6th, and only in American cinemas. So, I also love The Abyss. I think it's a fantastic film. Ed Harris is great. Uh, Michael Bean is great. Uh, uh, what's she called? Mary Elizabeth... Uh, no, what's it? Mary... Oh, I've forgotten her name. You say Nostrum, <laughs> oh, her name's escaped me. But she's fantastic. You as know, well. I haven't watched it in so long. It's, I, I need it to about rewatch two years it. Ago. You know, I, it's due a rewatch, and if, I might have to do so, that this I'd month. I'd be very excited to see a 4K update. Uh, hopefully, with because this is why I'm still waiting yeah, for that Aliens. Mean, so, 4K. so can you not? Can you not get it on 4K yet? No, then, not like yet. on home. Oh, see, no. mm. So I mean, that's we also can't get uh, Aliens in 4K yet. No, uh, I know. So I'm hoping I've already got the first one. if James Cameron is actually working on it, and I because the thing with like when Alien 4K came out, breathtaking, mm. love the restoration. However, some of the superimposed images <laughs> on the map paintings or on the ships and stuff, um, it, uh, that's it. Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio or something like that. Very close. Um, so I hope the special effects are getting touched up so that they they can pass today like i'm talking like the you know the the, the bishop drop ship scenes coming yeah. into land the explosions like that some of it looks oh, a mate, bit when dicky. that ship blew up even yeah. in 4k i was like hmm yeah it's, it's one <laughs> small like, blight like, uh, on the film so. still great though. sounded yeah. amazing but though. yeah if you are american and you've not seen the abyss before i i would i would take this opportunity to go and see it for mm. sure uh, next quick news story, uh, Deadpool director Tim Miller is looking to adapt another comic book series into a feature film. This time around, Alien Legion. Now, this is a property that's had many failed attempts to be turned into a TV series or a series of films going all the way back to the 90s. So this, this has been a project that's been trying to happen for nearly 30 years. Uh, it's described as the French Foreign Legion in space. The story focuses on an intergalactic peacekeeping force that took in all manner of alien species without asking too many questions about their pasts or intentions operating in an unwieldy government system known as the Galactic Union that is straining to be a democratic melting pot of all of these civilizations. Uh, prejudice and bad intentions abound and struggle with well-intentioned idealists. So I like some of Tim Miller's work. Um, I'm not totally familiar with the Alien Legion not at all. story, not at all. Uh, but I'll be excited to see this adaptation yeah, because based on the synopsis, I want to see this. Mm. Last news story for us. Really, really excited about this one. Never thought we would see a continuation. 
or a what if mm. from Spartacus. You know, Spartacus had a, a great first season, then a prequel season, and then two seasons following, like Vengeance and Damned, um, yeah. which a lot of people kind of tuned out of because they they were there for the Roman orgies and the gladiatorial Colosseum arena battles with the gladiators in training. Um, yeah, that's I mean, what we're going back to. I maintain those, those last those back end seasons were still good. Yeah, you I know, still they still play, it, it, they still told a good story unfortunately about. Unfortunately, they lost you know, the Spartacus main actor. Of course, yeah. Which, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, he died. Yeah, so. he passed away. Exactly. <laughs> it's not like yeah. they recast or anything. Yeah, but yeah, uh, but original creator Stephen S. Denight is coming back to do Spartacus House of Asher. Now, uh, Asher passed away where he got murdered at the climax of season two of Spartacus. So this is a what if Asher didn't die on Mount Vesuvius at the end of season two and was actually given the reins to House Batiatus's um, gladiatorial training school, his Ludus, inheriting the gladiators that were in there. Maybe Spartacus got killed and the, 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 the rebellion was put down. I don't really know what sort of history it's going to weave, but it's here to tell more stories. I so want to see some scene where Asher just like backstabs him like a dick. And, <laughs> right? Yeah, Asher's number one. <laughs> just like you know. Yeah, uh, but the original actor that played Asher in those two seasons is coming back to reprise the role as well. So. See again, that's the piece of the puzzle, right? Yes. It's, yeah. That's what makes it interesting. Uh, it makes it integral. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, so got a couple of trailers that I want to talk about uh, before we uh, take a quick break here. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's been six years since the last film in the War for the Planet of the Apes franchise, which ended the sort of reboot trilogy. Matt Reeves has stepped away um, from the Ape Kingdom, and now the Maze He's Runner Batmaning. trilogy director Wes Bell, oh, sorry, Wes Ball, has now taken the helm. And so this is a new installment following on, though, from the previous entries, leading all the way up to, like, the original 70s movie. Uh, Kingdom looks to release on May 24th of next year. I actually haven't seen the trailer for this one. Um, it... I saw some posters and some still images, and I'm like, I, I, I'm i already sold. I love this franchise. Well, I, I was When I watched it, it took me a minute to... I was like, oh, it's not Matt Reeves because it looks exactly like you know, okay, it's like so it feels like so it's I, part oh, of that great. universe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was I was shocked at the end that it wasn't actually Matt Reeves doing it. Um it's if it's more of the same just just, just put it in my face holes. Yeah, just bring Hell it. Oh yeah. Yeah, the uh, I mean from the screen grabs that I saw, the effects mm. look amazing. I'm I, I don't want any spoiler store, you know, spoilers uh, for it yeah. uh, from the trailer etc. Uh, cuz yeah, I am really excited for this one. Really excited. Uh, and now this is a this is a trailer yes. that made me jump out <laughs> of my seat. So excited! And there hasn't been a trailer to do that in a long time. Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. You know, both generations of Ghostbusters in New York facing off against a new world-ending threat. It's releasing in April of 2024. And here's the official synopsis. In Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the Spengler family returns to where it all started, the iconic New York City firehouse, to team up with the original Ghostbusters who developed a top secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level. But when the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes evil forces, Ghostbusters new and old must join forces to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. Uh, this one seals Gil Kennan step up as director, and he co-wrote along with Afterlife director Jason Reitman. Man, how excited are you for this one? Can't wait. I, was de- I said I was devastated that it wasn't like out for Christmas. Like, yeah, see your now? New York Frozen. I was like, when is that? Oh, spring. <laughs> like, right. yeah. It's an odd release. Stupid window. Stupid blockbusters, but um. But I think delays and other stuff as. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought it um looked. It had a great sort of like look to it that seemed very similar from Afterlife. Again, a lot of the reason that we liked Afterlife is they used the right nostalgia buttons for us by like, look, if we just keep the soundtrack alone the same, yeah. it's going to feel you know like that movie while we tell a new story. So yes. just keep doing more of that. Uh, the theories that have come out online have been phenomenal with a really? couple of new I've not seen any. Oh, God. I'm staying away like, from all speculation. I've already seen enough. The, Too much. The, the best one, which was kind of because it was like, there's like a young guy in there who looks like he's in his 20s and they were like, that's going to be Oscar. And you're like, dude, he's like 40 now. <laughs> right. So he's like our age. Right. Like, that's the point. Yeah. That is not that young kid, yeah. but still. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm after Afterlife, which I literally rewatched two days ago. Um, I'm down for the clown on it. 
Can't yeah. wait. I love that the trailer introduced, we got to see the OG Ghostbusters. I was like, I did not expect to see Bill Murray come back for another Ghostbusters awesome, film. Awesome, man. Can't so, wait. Yeah. Um, now, I also want to bring up, um, I'm going to try to pronounce his name, uh, Kumail Nanjiani. He tweeted out uh, that he's a huge fan of the real Ghostbusters, the animated series, and that the show was a point of reference for this movie. The filmmakers wanted to make a long episode of the real Ghostbusters animated series. So he also said, if you love that show as I do, be excited. Uh, the, <laughs> the the red jackets that they're wearing were yeah. straight out of the oh, show. The real Ghostbusters, yeah. I'm just like, this is amazing. I'm, I'm so excited for the future of Ghostbusters because, I mean, I love the original two movies and I know the afterlife is not in the same ballpark as those but if you had to do a, a handing of the torch movie and still keep you know the new york firehouse mm. setting have returning cast members this is a dream it's an absolute dream to see this uh, franchise still still kicking yeah absolutely <laughs> all righty well that's going to bring us to the end of the first part of the podcast we're going to take a very small break but when we come back andy and i are going to be counting down uh, the things that we are excited for and anticipating in 2024. Something to get hyped for. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you shortly. And welcome back to the second part of the podcast where Andy and I are going to get a little bit hyped. Some of the projects... We're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. <laughs> it's been a bleak, <laughs> miserable year. But we are still relatively excited for some of the uh, uh, films, TV shows, and games that are coming out next year. So we're going to count down. First, we're going to do films. Yeah. And then we're just going to, I guess, freeform discuss TV shows and games afterwards. Uh, but I just want to list a couple of my honorable mentions for stuff that I'm excited about that didn't quite make my top 10 of films that I'm excited for next year. Uh, Twisters, uh, a late sequel to Twister, though... No returning cast members. They almost just rebooted it. With so they just Twister. aliens did. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> exactly. Right. They just added an S on the end. Uh, the Karate Kid, which is actually the follow-on from Cobra Kai. Now going to be a movie. Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, I know a lot of people really didn't like Mortal Kombat. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it enough that it's not in my top 10, but I'm, I'm excited for it next year. Uh, Smile 2. I was actually... I put a smile on my face because yeah, I, I, I enjoyed need to the watch first it, one. I, I have it's not great, decent. but it had some memorable moments, and yeah, I'm happy to see another smile movie. Venom three, yeah, again another franchise that I'm like, how are they getting a third one? It's gonna be great. But I, I'm there for it. <laughs> it's I, gonna I, be I great. enjoyed the last two. Yeah, I, I'm there for Venom dumb three. Dumb fun, bit dumb fun. That's all you need. Yeah, uh, Joker, a uh, folly ado. Now. Uh, I think this one might be on your... This one is on my list. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So we'll, we'll come back to that yeah, one sure. a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, a Quiet Place, Day 1, mm. and Talk To Me 2. Still need to watch that first one. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And again, so, another Hopefully it's going to be Talk To Me. Yeah, yeah, like, right. Fucking yeah. writes itself. Man. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll get into uh, my number 10. Uh, Nosferatu. It's literally the first one I put on my list. Really? Robert. Awesome. Robert Eggers. Robert Eggers. Fucking yeah. Skarsgård. Yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's go, man. The Lily Rose, the Lily Witch, Rose the Depp's Northman. in it. So, yeah, very excited for this one. A gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman in 19th century Germany and the ancient Transylvanian vampire who stalks her, bringing untold horror with him. Robert Eggers, cinema. I it. can't um, wait until to see how this looks. Yes. Yeah. Because we've only seen, what, a couple of posters? I yeah. haven't seen any trailer or William, anything yet. Yeah. William Defoe as well. Yeah. It? William Defoe. Yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, it's not, it's 10 on my top 10. I'm excited for it, but there's a couple more that I'm super excited for. Was that number one, 10 as well? I, do you know what? I didn't really number them at all. Oh, that's fine. Down there, but it's, it, it was the first one I thought of, to be fair. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, I'll move on to my number nine. I haven't seen part one of your number nine yet. <laughs> That's fine. I'm Watch just waiting just until they're all out. Dune part two comes out. <laughs> but they're doing at least three, right? Mm, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, or maybe I will then. No. I thought when Dune part one came out that part two was already a done deal. But apparently it was not. Oh, okay. Uh, it was riding, because it was an expensive movie, it was mm. riding on the success of Dune as to whether he would be allowed to make a follow-up. They didn't just go, here's all the money, make a trilogy of Dune. So, again, they're going to wait to see how the second one does before they go, 
yeah, you get to make a third part. So I don't actually know. This might be the final Dune movie for now. Well, maybe I'll watch it then. Maybe I'll watch the first one. Yeah, and catch the first this one, one uh, debuted, I think, uh, simultaneously in cinemas and on HBO Max the same day, which was like one of the first movies to kind of do that. You know, back in 2021. Uh, it earned four hundred and two million at the box office, so it got its money back. It also earned ten Academy Awards uh, at the Oscars for original score, sound editing, cinematography, production design, visual effects. So, yeah, like all of the accolades, all of the awards, it was pretty much a no-brainer that they would get a second part. Enormous sand dicks in it. <laughs> They're worms. Oh, I haven't watched it. I told you. you need it's to been a long time since I've watched the original as well. And then do a I, double I, bill. I think. Yeah, the first I just one? remember staying in some giant worm dicks. No, oh, that was the old, old original that's what one I mean. with yeah. Patrick Stewart. And uh... <laughs> I will kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really enjoyed Dune. I I was one of those that was like, you know, what? I'll just wait until all the Dune parts are out, then just watch them all because I don't want to just watch yeah. part one. I want a full movie. Yeah. I feel like I cheated myself. This was a film I. I, as a film fan, should have seen in the cinemas. Mm. I can only hope that they actually re-release part one in cinemas just before part two Dude, comes out. they seem to now. I think they're they good do. for that. Yeah. That's all they seem yeah. to. So it's I'm a great idea. It's a great idea to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, really excited for this one. <laughs> Go on, really? Uh, oh, you want to do the next one? Well, no, I'm just I think excited is a bit, like, much, but... Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm much more excited for this one. <laughs> Above, like, spectacular filmmaker Robert Eggers, brilliant, renowned, Oscar-winning director Denis Villeneuve. Give me Terrifier 3. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for Terrifier 3. Art the Clown is going to unleash chaos on unsuspecting residents of Miles County as they peacefully drift off to sleep on Christmas Eve as... I mean, terrifying. He's going to kill Santa Claus. Right? Oh, he's, going. he's going to kill There's Santa no Claus. There's no way he doesn't kill Santa in this movie. <laughs> and not like, oh, a guy dressed as Santa. No, he's going to he's gonna eat them reindeer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. I think looking forward to this is a bit strong for me because it's that, <laughs> it's more of a like, you can't look away from a car crash, but I'm not looking forward to seeing it. You know, it's like, <laughs> right? you just... Yeah, man. I don't know. I'm. Uh, I, I am excited. Like I wasn't I, excited I am in for the way. first one. I ignored it. I was like, oh, I just. I just movie. again. I'm just. I'm just such a huge fan of the success that it's brought for such a small studio and group. And I think that they did as much as it's like you know, I, like I've seen Terrifier one and two. Yeah. Once and that's. Yeah, pro- once, I'm probably yeah. never going to rewatch it ever again because <laughs> I can. I. I don't know what mood I'd have to be in to be like. Oh, I do fancy watching Terrifier. I, don't know, I keep today. seeing memes you know? or gifts of Art the Clown, and I'm like. I really want to watch that again. I would like to see them build on the the girl character that resur- spoilers that resurrects him. Yeah, um, I'd like to see that because we even said from the first one when it's sort of like you know a little bit of they, they haven't they haven't fucking explored the lore yet, and then in the second one they brought in a lot more supernatural stuff. And... Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would like to see a little bit more. But he's probably just gonna rip a load of fucking arms off out of sockets, <laughs> though. That's probably all we're gonna get. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. I just can't wait to see his Christmas dinner spread <laughs> for oh, the whole family. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so bad. It's gonna be gross, isn't it? Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be gross. Well, I mean, he's yeah, he's he's teased that it's like this is gonna be the worst one. So. Yeah, yeah, and I, I can't. I, I think I mean, you set I, yourself an impossible task in a I way think as well, so, where yeah, it's just sort like, of like you've just got to keep, you just got to outdo keep it, keep doing it. Yeah, I reckon he might might outdo the first two movies, but. I think I, I I would say that I think Terrifier three should be the final one. Yeah, usually the fourth one's the 100%. final chapter, you know? uh, or it's the return to or return at that point. I mean, but, and at least just sort of like yeah, use the money to do other projects and stuff. To like, you stuff. know, but yeah, 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 I'd like to see them put the stories back. I mean, look, at the, at the end of the day, uh, when he, he he's going to get defeated by whoever he's charging, and then he's still going to be alive by the end of it in the post credits or something yeah. like that. But you can still write a definitive story to it. Yeah, you know, agreed, agreed. Alrighty, my uh, next one on my list is Beetlejuice Two. Uh, I've uh, I'm a huge fan of Tim Burton's early work. Uh, after he started doing like Alice in Wonderland and uh, the uh, the the Planet of the Apes reboot movie God, yeah. with Wahlberg. Yeah, like uh, I was like uh, uh, the fucking monkey. <laughs> it was just 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 a bad bad string of movies. 
Although I'm really excited that he has returned for Beetlejuice 2. Yeah. I'm loving the cast list. Michael Keaton's back. Jenna Ortega, uh, Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, Monica Belushi, William Defoe. I'm like, this is a great cast. Jenna Ortega is such genius casting. But also, yeah. like, such a fucking, like, layup of casting. It's like, of course she should play, like... Yeah, um, Winona Ryder's daughter. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> she should. It's like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Perfect casting, yeah. So, yeah, I'm... Uh, I mean, I, I don't know much about the story. They've kept it mostly under wraps other than that Beetlejuice has a wife that will be played by Monica Belushi. Which is fucking sweet because any time yeah. I get to see her on screen, it's a good day. After watching Michael Keaton's performance in The Flash as well because he was absolutely the fucking shining light in that yeah, movie. Agreed, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm cool with him reprising old roles and just yeah. slipping back Hell into yeah. it. <laughs> totally. Alrighty now. He's going Hawaiian. Yes, bitch. <laughs> oh, if that t- if it turns out that that is actually the plot, I'll be so happy. <laughs> I mean, wasn't that like a, that was it was Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian. That That's was the right, original yeah. sequel idea. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. when people ask why did a sequel never get made, it's like I think we just told you every, <laughs> yeah. the exact reason that it didn't get fucking made. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine he got married in Hawaii. I imagine that, that there's got to be a callback. There's, there's got to be a callback to it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> God, I can't wait to see Nicolas Cage officiate that wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope we get to see more of the ghost world. Like, that was one of my favourite parts, like, when they oh, first yeah, die, create the door and go in there, and you've got the uh, the American football team that all died. <laughs> Do you reckon they'll upscale, in the same way that June upskilled... Upskill, uh, upscaled. upscaled the the sand <laughs> yeah. They'll do the same thing in this. I don't know because yeah, it's typical Tim Burton landscape, isn't mm. it? The the outside of the house like horrorscape. But yeah, I wonder like who's gonna die and enter the ghost world. And Catherine O'Hara is so good as well. I, like, I haven't fuck. seen her in anything I in love, so well, long. Well, she did so. um, is it um, Schmidt's Creek or whatever it was called? She was doing that series and stuff. Right. She did. Yeah, she's done a few things. She did like series of unfortunate events and stuff. Like that. She's just so fucking wonderful. I love her to pieces. I really do. She's great. Awesome. <laughs> uh, my number six is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. We just talked about. Yeah, this I had one. this on my list as well. This one's a this one's a no brainer. Absolutely. Watch this. It's taking many years, taking place many years after the reign of Caesar, which would followed in the last trilogy, where a young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past and make choices that will define a future for apes and humans alike. So Can't wait. It, it very much, I mean, obviously I've not seen the trailer. I'm super excited already. All I know is that little tidbit and that it's basically not leaving much room now before the original movie that set the whole yeah. thing off is about to take place. So, yeah, yeah. Really excited for this one. Now, uh, I, 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 there's not been you know Roland Emmerich. You know his time in the limelight has come and gone. Like his spectacle disaster movies are kind of done and dusted after the moon fell in Moonfall, which was supposed to be the start of a new trilogy of Moonfall movies, which doesn't seem very likely to happen anymore. Which is a shame because it's absolutely stupid. Uh, you know, the, the concept the science fiction but it's one of those movies that i enjoy i like roland emmerich movies mm. just for their brain dead spectacle and uh and i still get my spectacle movies now in the monster in the giant kaiju movies uh godzilla x kong the new empire Godzilla and Kong face a terrifying monster that threatens the entire planet. That's a question, actually, because the best guess is the plot for this one is it's being kept massively uh, under wraps. Uh, Adam Wingard uh, is returning to uh, to make this one. Obviously, we've also got the TV series, which is just Mo- started. Monarch, I'm looking forward to watching. What uh, there's, there's a Japanese Godzilla as well. Uh, yes, zero? Godzilla Zero One, I think. So Something like, like that. A, minus, uh, one. minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm. I've not really kept up with the uh, the Japanese uh, Godzilla movies. No. You know, I mean, brother was a huge fan of them. Uh, I've seen many of them, but I couldn't tell you which one was which. Uh, but it is fun to see these re- this reimagining. Obviously, talking about Roland Emmerich a while mm. ago, who did Godzilla. Uh, I- I've enjoyed uh, the this monster thon. I still think my favorite in the franchise so far is Kong Skull Island. That one was still my favorite because it was kind of fun and adventure type film whereas the other Godzilla movies tend to get a little bit a bit lost in the human drama that first one just I was like I I think I watched I've watched it once I was I never want to watch that ever again in my life it was so bad I I didn't mind Skull Island in fact no I enjoyed Skull Island yeah that one was good um 
the Godzilla 2 again just sort of like still not there mm, but, but King not, of the Monsters not as I had yeah King of the Monsters no, the yeah. Second one, yeah and then obviously they had Godzilla versus Kong versus Kong which was like it sounds like well this is fucking stupid but... <laughs> right at the least they, of but it I was, was like, fantastic. but at least you can fucking see it now. Yeah, there you know, was they lit it. during the day. Um, and then, like, you know, let let's go to a neon city to to have that fight. Yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> but Mecha Godzilla looked like shit. Yeah, it looked terrible. Yeah, it really did. Um, but I I, it. I I kind of the most interesting part of it was the the under earth, which yes. I'm like, okay, let's explore that. Yeah, like, something 100%. new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I imagine uh, they'll probably have to go back down there to get Kong and be like, hey, we need you back on the surface. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, they end end up, he ends up down there, doesn't he? He's like, he's ruling it by the, um, you know, by by the end of that movie. So I would have thought that's where they pick it up from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, My number four uh, on excitement levels for 2024 is Furiosa. Mm, the this origin on my list story too. of renegade warrior Furiosa before she teamed up with Mad Max in Fury Road. George Miller's directing. Done. Like I yep. think Fury Tick. Road is one of the best action movies uh, of uh, you know of this of the last like twenty years. Uh, I still think it is number one. Uh, fantastic. Um, interesting choice. Anna Taylor Joy as Furiosa, uh, but also starring Chris Hemsworth and Angus Sampson, who's returning from Fury Road. Um, I guess like we know how Furiosa she's going to find out how she loses her arm how she rises up through the ranks of the road warriors uh, working for um, uh, you know the guy with the mask Immortan Joe and Immortan yeah. Joe yeah so I don't know the, the fact that George Miller is attached to it the fact that it's his project I, I'm sure this is going to be outstanding with very minimal CGI fantastic sort of set pieces yeah. and vehicular combat like this is a done deal. This is gonna oh, hundred awesome. percent, man. This is yeah. This went straight on my list. I can't wait. Um, love Anatella Joy. I love the fact that it, I'm going to be basically the the guy from. Um, I'm I'm basically going to be um, John Cusack from Hot to Time Machine all the way through. Like, <laughs> You're going to lose that fucking arm and every, <laughs> every time she goes to do anything. I'm going to be like, oh, oh yeah, not yet, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number three on my list is Deadpool 3. Yeah, this was on mine too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine is recovering from his injuries when he crosses path, paths with the loudmouth Deadpool. And they team up to defeat a common enemy. We've had some still images. We got pretty excited to see Wolverine He's in, in his X-Men The yellow suit. suit. Yeah. Sold. Right. You just, it's, I was like, tick it. Done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is, I guess, like, now that Marvel and, like, owns the X-Men and everything else, and this is, like, I guess their first crossing of the X-Men and the current Marvel Universe for both Deadpool and uh, Wolverine. (laughs) So, uh, I don't know how it's going to fit in the current slate of the MCU, but... Hey, listen, man, the first two were great. They were great fun movies. There's no reason not to expect that the third one's not going to do the same. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like some and you know that those gross two, out humor. yeah, you know that those two being sort of like you know because they're very publicly like good friends as well. So like you get people that enjoy working with each other to just do that kind of movie where they're probably given a lot of freedom with ad libbing and trying different things. It's probably going to result in a really good product. So hell yeah, can't yeah. wait. Yeah, hell yeah. Alrighty, my number two. We talked about this just a little bit. Straight on my list. Yeah, <laughs> Ghostbusters. It's only my number two. But Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, you know, the Spengler family returning to New York, that firehouse with the original Ghostbusters, a new monster or demon, you know, not, not doing uh, Vigo. He's returned back to his painting with mm-hmm. the River of Slime. Like, we're not reusing stuff. We've got a whole brand new villain, hopefully with some brand new ghosts. Uh, hopefully they still... The, 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 the new trailer didn't really hit you too much with any of the nostalgia. It very much just went, we're our own thing Here's now. the adventure. We're moving on. This is which, the adventure. Which again, really sparks to that real Ghostbusters vibe of like, you know, here's the story this week and you know, yeah. this is what we're doing. I, I was also a bit like, it's a, it's kind of a shame that they're not numbering. We've got Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2. Mm. Now it's Afterlife. Now it's Frozen Empire, which is what, the fourth movie? But I guess there's going to be more like, you know, uh, they got they, they are planning multiple movies spin-offs and other stuff but i just imagine now that they won't be numbered anymore they will just be chapter names i guess which i guess i'm fine with i, I just i like the old formula of the numbers the numeric you know, roman numeral numbers mm. but yeah i'm fine with the uh with the titles i guess 
I don't think you are. Doesn't sound like you are. I think you're trying to convince yourself. I am. I'm trying. <laughs> I think I just convinced myself that I'm fine with, with the subtitles. <laughs> Okay, well, so yeah. this one is on my list as well. Yeah. And I was kind of like, it's one of those where I'm like, okay, yeah. But also, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a tentative, oh, just, just this let could it be, be good. Just please let it be good. Yeah. Talking about Alien. Alien is my favorite franchise. It's my favorite horror movie series. It has more bad ones than good ones now. Uh, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Alien Romulus... Um, from director Fede Alvarez, who did the Evil Dead remake and Don't Breathe. Um, Two good films. Gets to uh, rejuvenate the Alien franchise with Alien Romulus. Now, the premise for this one is that young people uh, from a distant world must face the most terrifying life form in the universe. And it's set between Alien and Aliens. I'm like, well... That's a 57-year window mm. of time, so they've got plenty of space to play around with there. Uh, we've seen a couple of behind-the-scenes still images that they've posted, like the face hugger along you know, the, uh, the clapboard. Um, we've seen that they've taken some inspiration from Alien Isolation with like some of the set design, uh, but that's it. Like The cast list has been out, uh, but we've also been told that, yes, it's going to be gory. It's going to be 18-rated. Um, I... I, I I've been so disappointed and dejected and I've literally been stunned silent after some of the abysmal alien films that have come out over the last 10 years. Please don't let me down, Fede Alvarez. Please don't let me down, Alien Romulus. I'm really excited for this. Uh, so yeah, that's my number one uh, most excited film for 2024. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I mean, I, I, again, I've, I, I'm not even going to watch the trailer. I'm not I'm as just, well. I'm, I'm going to avoid going. that trailer. I'm just going to avoid it because it's like, look, it's just they they I'll don't really they night. don't really tend to give you much in an alien trailer anyway, as you would hope because yeah. you do want to go in kind of blind. It's just like, look, you've had a couple of missteps here with this franchise. Like, look, let's learn from them, please. That's yes. all you got to do. Yeah. It's not hard to tell a it's not hard to tell a fun alien story that's like you know scary that's entertaining. They did it in life, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, get yeah. some good actors, some good writing, get the sets up to speed. You know, real sets, real atmosphere. Get that tension. And don't, tease don't, the alien. don't. In fact, I'm almost like, don't try and do too much world building. You've got yeah, there's plenty the, done already. Exactly, you've <laughs> yeah. got it. You've got that perfect organism. Yeah, just use it. You don't yeah. need to build like you know. How do we turn this into five movies? Like you don't. You just let's just, just get a good story. one out. Let's yeah. tell that fucking story yeah. from beginning to end. That's all you got to do. You know? Hell yeah. So no, I can't wait. I mean, the only ones that I think that we haven't mentioned that I've got on mine is yeah, Joker two is definitely in my most answers because I fucking love that movie. I'm so much. I, yeah, I, I love Joker as well, but um, it's the fact that the second one seems to be going in a completely different. Do you know like, what? Because they no, didn't want to make another one. No, but this is the funny thing is like because I I think that's why. Mm. When the, it's fuck it, Lady Gaga's in it, and it's a musical, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> like, all right, I'm down for that. Star is born's really good, <laughs> so I um I I am because they've gone so outlandish. Because yeah, it's almost like that that first movie sits in such a wonderful bubble of like that's that one story. You don't need to do anything else with it. You don't need to expand. It's like that's his story there. Yeah, I I almost prefer the amb ambiguous sort of nature of like. That's not Batman's Joker. This is yeah. like this is how the disease starts of that right. madness in Gotham. Of Gotham. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. that's kind of what I liked. So that it sits wonderfully in that bubble. But I mean, this is this movie is probably going to be a fever dream. Yeah, I imagine you know? so. It's probably it's like when people. I wonder it's where gonna this is going to sit. Reality. It's not going <laughs> to sit anywhere. It's going to sit in his head probably. But in that case, that means you can do some really cool shit with it. So yeah. I'm excited for that one. That one does I'm, look good. I, I'm interested um, to see the relationship between Joker and Harley. Absolutely. Uh, and hopefully to see her as you know the 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 professional, the 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 doctor who slowly goes mad. Well, I, I think that because of the way they represented like his mental decline in that first one, which is why it's so good. is like, dude, you, you know, this, this whole romanticized Harley and Joker um, relationship is kind of bullshit. It's like, so that is <laughs> the, like the most abusive relationship anyone's ever been in. Really. You know, if you take sort of like a lot of like really physical stuff out of it, it's like, 
he destroys this girl. He destroys yes. her. Mentally. And Absolutely. it's not a pretty process, you know? So they could go to some really dark places here. And then to just, like, offset that with musical numbers. <laughs> right. This could be Jacob's <laughs> Ladder. This could be ja- this could be the Jacob's yeah. Ladder of fucking superhero thrillers, movies. Like, you know what I mean? Super- <laughs> I mean or it could be shit. But I'm just saying, like, hope, I, we it, live in it hope. It looks like it's experimental, at least. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be fascinating so, to I'm, watch. I'm down for it, you and know? And I, I just think tonally it's going to be a completely different movie to the yeah. first one. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, um, definitely on my to-watch list, for sure. But just The other one I was, I kind of question marked, because I was like, I think this is going to be out next year, because that's the most recent thing I read, which is the Crow movie. Yes, I did see that it's coming out next year. Stars Guard well. is do you know and like they're moving forward with it and it's gonna be a more faithful retelling of James Elbar's. I love the original comic. Brandon Lee movie so so much. Yeah. Like I will watch a remake crow movie. I mean I've seen all the crappy sequels, you know, like it's gonna yeah, be better than that. I feel them. like we're owed it. What's that fu- <laughs> right? what's that fucking series? Um Yeah, and I, I I like the old there are some really old school, you know, like black and white comic books from my youth so i'm like i'm i'm looking forward to uh i'm looking forward to them going fucking Gothic dark imagery and it's scars guard yeah he's, yeah, he's scary yeah, yeah you know the avenging spirit should be scary so yeah. let's let's yeah. hopefully fingers crossed on that one as well so yeah was there any others on your film those list? are my films now I just but i've got a couple of tv up, and yeah before games. we get into tv i just want to say on both of our lists how many are new IPs, a new project, not a sequel, not oh, a remake. Oh no. no, I was just about to say there was one more, and that's Beyond the Spider Verse. But also, yeah, yeah, a sequel. Uh, I was going to check mine. Alien the Romulus, most original sequel. thing Ghostbusters, on there is like sequel, Deadpool three, sequel, yeah. Furiosa, prequel, Godzilla vs Kong, sequel, Planet of the Apes, sequel slash prequel, Beetlejuice two, sequel, Terrifier three, sequel, Dune two, sequel, Nosferatu is the a remake. Remake. I <laughs> <laughs> got nothing new. <laughs> nah man but it's not it's not the end of the world uh, what about <laughs> hey, is, is it out next year is it, have I missed that Zack Snyder movie Rebel Moon I don't know is that next year I, I know the trailer's come out which I'm not yeah. watching because I'm like I'm going to watch that when it comes yeah, out I'll on Netflix that. whenever it does but yeah just an interesting observation of some of our lists <laughs> um, I, yeah I haven't got anything uh, Quiet Quiet Place Day 1 is a prequel obviously so yeah um, yeah Nah, it's just no one's got any ideas left, guys. Sorry. There you go. All right, shall we move on to some TV shows? Yeah, man, go for it. All righty. The number one TV show I'm looking forward to next year is The Walking Dead spin off, yep. The Ones Who Live. Uh, the series will follow Rick and Michonne Grimes and will serve as a conclusion to the character stories following their respective exits from The Walking Dead main show, uh, replacing the previously planned trilogy of films following rick grimes and it's going to premiere in february of 2024 so not too far away now really excited to see rick back on the screens because he's been out of the walking dead universe for several years now so i hope i hope it's good because i know a lot of people already tapped out of the walking dead before rick even left the show the show got really good after he left. I hope but that it's was good because, because of the writing you, in I just feel bad change. for you because you've really hung on to this bitch. I know. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> yes. oh, so good. It's like me watching through, like, you know, like, say, five years of wrestling. That was really bad. I was just like, just it'll, it'll, get get it, good it'll get good again. It'll get good again. Don't worry. <laughs> it will, I promise. <laughs> Gotta have <Yeah>. hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to become a member of The Walking Dead. I know it. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh, the next one I will talk about is Fallout. Mentioned this one already. This one's an Amazon Prime video adaptation of the video game series. I think we talked about this before the podcast, actually. We did, yeah, yeah. yeah. I-, I love some good uh, apocalyptic storytelling with the kind of funky uh, Americana vibe of the Fallout game series. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I've seen some set images and it looks like they've nailed it it's visually. Don't know about the cast. That's don't know the about the dialogue bit. or the storytelling. That's the easy part. Though. That's the easy it's part. It's there. Replicate visually. That's all you got to do. That yeah, exactly. So I, yeah. I, yeah, I love me a fucking post-apocalyptic. Thing. We were talking about Turbo Kid, yeah. as an example. Yeah. It's like just get a just get a good story. It's a series. Isn't it? I'm talking it's about a, TV shows. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, so you you can tell a nice long story. Just fucking. It's not hard. Just don't it's, fuck it's it right up. There. Just don't fuck it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, next one I want to talk about <clears throat> is Masters of the Air. 
Uh, this one's going to be streaming exclusively on Apple Plus, and it's coming from producers Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. So 12 people will watch it. Right, yeah. and the rest of us will wait for the DVD, <laughs> Blu-ray, box set, whatever. And uh, it's also got the same writer uh, of, as Band of Brothers, and this is, I guess, their third entry after Band of Brothers and The Pacific. Now we have Masters of the Air. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Masters of the Air tells the story five miles above ground, behind enemy lines, uh, 11 men inside a bomber known as a flying fortress battle unrelenting <laughs> flocks of German fighters as they bomb Germany during World War II. Five miles in the air, can you be behind enemy lines? Is that how that works? <laughs> Five miles <laughs> over, <laughs> under, um, uh, <laughs> dropping bombs on Germany. But yeah, it's going to tell, I think it's over like six to eight episodes, hour long kind of spectacles. We're going to, you know, bond with, uh, with numerous, you know, uh, bomber pilot teams. Yeah. Uh, as they literally, you know, get hit with a shrapnel, you know, uh, get hit, go down, you know, all, all of that sort of gripping, you know, history stuff. But uh, I think the Pacific was a bit of a miss. I think it missed more than it hit mm. compared to Band of Brothers. So hopefully they get a good cast. I mean, the other both of the other shows have amazing Band, cast. Band of Brothers felt a bit kind of like lightning in a bottle in a way. It, it really did, honest. yeah. Yeah, I rewatched because it's been so it's been done so much. It, the stories have been told, the setting's been used so much that it's yeah, it's actually difficult now. You know, like we've talked about it when they've managed to bring out like like All Quiet on the Western Front. Yeah, you know, nineteen seventeen was a good example. It's yeah. like it's hard for you to give me a World War One or two you know period give me a movie perspective for me to actually go like oh yeah follow. yeah it's like we've seen it so get many caught times up in the drama. Yeah, so. Yeah. It'll be good, but I mean, for, well, I mean, writers from Band of Brothers, they got a good shot. So. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, next one, I think a lot of people are probably excited for it's this on my one. list. Stranger Things, fifth and final season. I've got to be determined because, well, yeah, we weren't and sure that, that it was a hundred percent for next year. But. Yeah, uh, I mean, when season five was first announced, the Duffer Brothers said in a statement that the complete story arc was planned out seven years ago, and that the fifth outing. We'll see the culmination of that entire plan. They've said that the final season won't have like hour and a half long episodes. Uh, they've basically figured out how to condense down That's a their shame. storytelling. I like. They said that the, I the liked final the long part episodes. will still be epic <laughs> in okay. its length and in its spectacle, but they really want to make sure that they get the episode, you know, timings down. But they're not restricted to. So if they yeah. do go over, but that's a good indicator is that we don't really know they're still putting it together. They're still filming it. I love uh, how they've got that pull with Netflix. We're like, how long is it? It's like, we'll fucking tell you when it's, it's done. Yeah, exactly, yeah. No who, idea whether like, the final season's going to get Who cares? Split. You're not running out of tape, are you? Just fucking, <laughs> right. like, like, it'll be as long as we say it is. Their biggest um, challenge right now is, obviously, with the strikes and with the delays between seasons, the, the kids' cast have grown up quite a bit. And they're all filming stuff as well. And they're all so doing they're like, other they're projects. They're busy and they're like... So yeah. they've said that they're not going to do... Um, they're not going to do CGI de-aging of the actors. Mm. They said they're going to do makeup and they're going to do costumes. I was just going to say, you can do lighting. a lot with costumes. Yeah. And because of the way it's set, I think you can do a lot. And also, I'm like, you know what? You've bought enough goodwill that I'm willing to just be like, you know what? Shh. It's fine. It's, it's a, fine. in their early like, teen, late teens yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, right now, I mean, they're still speculating with the news that's coming out that there may actually be a time jump during season five, so that the actors can then play the their characters at the age it's that they're currently. Great at. idea. So it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Squid Game season two. You don't care. I don't care. Uh, I like watching people. I didn't like the first. Try one. to. <laughs> you didn't like it. I just thought. I didn't think it was very good. Oh. <laughs> I just. I didn't get it. I just didn't get what. I like I like escape. There was some inventive. Type there was, movies, sorry, there was some know? inventive stuff for yeah. sure, but character wise, nothing grabbed nothing me. Nothing gripped you character that, wise. The the, I, the, the, I give you that. the twist reveal was just kind of like it was you know you the pull that up? competition of humans like, did, fighting for a huge cash sum of money in grueling murderous traps. Like, there's a real in games. there's a real series of it now as well. There is Netflix. yeah, <laughs> without the fatalities. The, yeah, well you oh, I haven't watched it. <laughs> Um, oh, they're really, but they're yeah, like, like the, the twist, the twist at the end, which I was, oh fuck, I see, it's a fucking years old. It's his You're brother, two years old, his, now, his yeah. brother, and that. I was like, would well, you have a fucking fishbowl of like twists or something? You just plucked that out. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, 
<laughs> fucking M. Night Shyamalan come in for a fucking I, day I, or something. Actually, I think Squid Game's first episode and last episode were the weakest ones for me. Yeah. All the episodes where they were having the Squid Games, I loved it. I loved the designs. I loved the games. Yeah, like the second and I one had the, me, the mass slaughter. The, the second one had me a little bit more like kind of, all right, oh, yeah, all right, this might be okay. But it just like, again, just none of the characters moved on in any way that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Except yeah. for that old dude. Yeah. He's kind <laughs> of, he was fun. Yeah. <laughs> he was disappointed. You're right, you're no right, Big Ed. Not a single squid in the old thing. <laughs> Welcome to Derry is the next one. I should also say my TV shows is not listed like my film ones. These are just in random order. Yeah, and also, like for mine, I was writing them on the list and a few of them got question marks because it's like strange thing. I was is like, it going out? Is it next oh, no. year? Yeah. Because like, uh, my next one, Welcome to Derry, is also to be determined yeah. because I heard it's also been delayed the, right this now. was on my list but again same thing i was like H- fingers crossed like, yeah no scars guard returning but uh, it still has andy <coughs> and barbara muschietti who directed and produced the last two it movies so they're they, staying apart could they not it. get a scars guard i mean there's enough <laughs> there's others. <laughs> but i mean like, i don't know I, I i'd have loved to have seen scars guard reprise the role of pennywise mm-hmm. but uh because they're going back in time i guess another iteration of him i don't Hopefully it works, because we're going to see how he became the Pennywise, the Skarsgård was. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, uh, more time in Derry, more time in the Stephen King universe. And maybe it's not needed, the mystery of Pennywise, but I'd like some lore. I'd like to see uh, where the story goes. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, Alien, the TV series. Not only are we getting a new Alien movie next year, we're getting an Alien TV series next year. And uh, this one is being directed by Noah Hawley. Uh, he was responsible for TV shows like Fargo, Legion and Bones. And it's based on the Alien franchise. And it will actually be a prequel set 30 years before the events in the 1979 film, Alien. Oh, fucking jumping around everywhere, aren't we? We are. So I'm like, well, this is before the company even knew I was going to say, was, this, uh, is, this, this is the issue. This is, this is like, set well, after Prometheus. Yeah, do we start like, you know, and then... After after Covenant, but before Alien. I don't know. And it's a TV series. I'm um, like, considering how, how critically acclaimed Fargo has been behind Noah Hawley, I have faith. I have, you know, expectations. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just super excited that I think we're from some good... I'm just excited that it's not Ridley Scott. <laughs> Uh, behind this alien, the Eva alien installment, um, so uh, I, I, I'm I'm setting myself up for a huge, huge uh, disappointments next year. But I I can't wait. I really can't wait. I'm also excited. Like two of my favorite sci-fi franchises of all time, Alien and Blade Runner, have got new installments coming mm. out next year, which leads me on to the next TV show that I'm excited for, Blade Runner twenty ninety nine which takes place 50 years after the events of Blade Runner 2049 that Ridley Scott is actually involved in. He's going to be producing the show and uh, he wants to tell more stories in that Blade Runner universe. I'm down. I love the Blade Runner universe. Even though it's jumping so far into the future, I'm curious to see uh, what the world building is there. And uh, I think this one's being done by Amazon Studios as well. Oh, really? Well, I need to double check on this one, but I think, I think this one's being done by Amazon. But well, I need to check. I need to check on that one. And here's another TV show that I'm excited for, which may not actually happen yet. Mm. It seems to be gaining momentum, but Judge Dread Mega City One. Going to be set in a future where the entire East Coast of the United States has become one crowded metropolis. And the show will feature an ensemble of judges, basically law enforcers who are endowed with the power of a traditional judge, jury and executioner. As they attempt to curb crime in the 22nd century. Uh, no cast yet. No release window. It might not even happen yet. All I know is that Carl Urban is still going, I'll play Dread. Which makes me go, they still haven't cast yeah. Dread yet. So they're not filming, but they're trying to keep it moving forward. The only thing I can think of in today's modern world is... I imagine they're finding it hard to find investors that want to produce a show where cops get to murder people however they feel like you know? yeah it's uh, i can imagine it's hard to do but it is a sci-fi <laughs> like, this isn't world. fiction anymore <laughs> right it's like real life i don't know i mean it's it's it, love the 2080 comic series love carl urban's dread 
I'll still take moments from Stallone's Dread if you really need a campy kind of Dread movie. Uh, but I, I really hope that... The, the bikes look good, didn't they? Yeah. The bikes look good in and that the robot, Judge Dread one. too as well. Yeah, that was cool. If That's Carl about Urban it. If <laughs> gets cast as Dread, I think this will do really, really With well. With bells on. It's a that, shame. Because Dread was watched. great. Yeah. Dread was it, fucking it great. It was great. And it's such a shame we didn't get a follow-up. I hope if Carl Urban gets cast, this will serve as a, a follow-up. Next one on my list. I never thought, you know, that I would be excited ever again for a Game of Thrones <laughs> series. But House of the Dragon was in my top ten last year or the year before. I can't remember now. Uh, well, the last top ten, basically. The last top yeah, ten, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, no, I think it, I didn't think it was out last year. I think it was 2002. God, really? Yeah, because they said it was going to be a two-year break between seasons mm, well, to enough. film it and do all the effects work on it. Uh, but this one's coming out in the summer of 2024. Um, basically after the death of their father two siblings fight for the throne causing a civil war known as the dance of dragons uh i didn't think i'd get excited for game of thrones i didn't think i'd return to the franchise after the diabolical rush job of game of thrones but house of the dragon phenomenal i love fantasy i love dragons i love wizards i love good storytelling and strong characters world building it had everything and some of the best dragons i've ever seen in any medium whatsoever and not only that all the dragons are unique and identifiable unlike game of thrones where all three dragons looked the same mm. in house of the dragon every single dragon is different from its wings its body its color the way it flew they actually had identifiable personalities Oh my god, I can't wait for season two. That's awesome. <laughs> the Boys! Season four. Yeah, really this was a no-brainer on my list. It's like, you know, it's just... <laughs> Superhero fatigue, say what? Mm. I really can't wait this for is season four. <laughs> <laughs> and now, recently, uh, a tweet was put out by the visual effects uh, supervisor and associate producer, uh, Stefan Fleet, tweeted out and said, I think I just saw the most disgusting thing I have ever seen working in this business thus far. And that's a pretty huge statement when we consider all the things we've seen in all the previous Boys in Gen V seasons so far. So they're going to up the ante in terms of the visual splatter that uh, that we can expect. I mean, uh, most of the seven are kind of dead at the moment. So we're going to see some new superheroes and lots of death. <laughs> they're keeping the, the, the plot under wraps right now. But Gen V was... Give you a little kind of segue into yeah, what to expect to watch story wise. That. I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah. It just just keep just keep going. Just keep doing what you're doing. That's all we got. To, you <laughs> yeah. know, when something works, they it works. have an end end uh, uh, an ending of the show in sight. But I don't feel like they're padding it out or stretching it no. too much just yet. No, no, no. I feel like they're building and building. The characters are still interesting enough on their own that it's just it's a joy and it's watch. It really is. It really is. Uh, the next TV show that I'm super hyped for is The Bear, season three. I really need to watch this. Uh, I haven't watched this either. It's oh, terrible. wow. I, do, it's, I really need to watch it. I, I, saw, I got to watch season one and season two this year. Uh, it was really obviously season two where, I mean, season one did well, but season two was catapulted into, mm. you know, the headlines and in terms of uh, high anxiety drama and gut punching emotion, phenomenal performances by every single cast member. Um, it really is uh, a joy to watch. Uh, the premise essentially is that a young chef from the real, you know, fine dining world returns to uh, Chicago to help run his family sandwich shop after his brother has just recently passed away. The tensions between him and those that are still running the restaurant, uh, the way that he tries to reshape it, the way that there are characters that you might despise but then absolutely come to love when they get a focal episode on them and you really get to understand how they tick, how they work, and then when you see them then in the context of the ensemble again, it's fantastic writing, beautiful performances, and just one of the best shows on television right now. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So... I'm so excited that season three uh, got picked up because they left us hanging after season two mm. as to, was that it? Will there be more? There will be. Another TV show that uh, I've been left 
waiting for and wondering if it would actually happen. This is a Ben Stiller produced show. I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark leads a team of office workers whose memories have been surgically divided between their work and personal lives. Quick, you know, recap of that premise. So you hate your mundane job. You go to the severance company so that when you step in to do your job, the very next second in your time, you're walking back out because eight hours have just passed and you have no memory of doing that very mundane job. However, the series follows that personality of yours that's in the building doing that mundane eight hour job and they never get to go home. They never get to see their wife, raise their children, watch movies. All they do is they appear, do the job, they walk out the door and then bang, it's the start of the next day and the next day and the next day and it drives them mad. Hmm. Great premise. Waited two years now for a follow-up season and they've said they've got several seasons of story to tell. So super excited for this one. I'll, I'll give that one a go. Definitely yeah, give that one. Definitely a go. give it a go. I think the only other ones that I've got, um, and again, there's some question marks on these these three. I think is if we can get a follow up to Last of Us, that'd be great. Mm. So I think um, we're gonna wait till 2025. I on think this you one? might be right, but you never know. Obviously, with everything being up in the air. Yeah. yeah. Same again. Peacemaker two, please. Oh yes. Yeah. They, For James fuck's Gunn sake. Said it will happen. Come on. Yes. <laughs> oh, filming a fucking Wally Coyote movie that never comes out when he could be <laughs> just killing motherfuckers. Uh, and the other one that is confirmed for next year, but there's zero details about, is the God of War series. Right. Yeah. In fact, sorry, there's one confirmed detail, and that is um, the uh, Dwayne Johnson will not be playing Kratos. No. Which I was like, fucking sweet. <laughs> like, good. I don't want Dwayne Johnson to play Kratos. Thank you. I'd like them to. Who do you want? Uh, do you know what? In a way, I almost don't know. And everyone. It... I don't know what people. Oh, Triple H. I was like, look, I guess it's, that it's I get that he kind actor. of looks like him, <laughs> but here's something weird. Let's, you know, like, there, the, you know, you can put muscle on, you can do CGI, you can make someone look like someone. That's not a problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, who who's got a really commanding, you know, voice, voice and presence? I'm, I, I don't know because I get the feeling that it'd be someone. I, I, I think it would be someone who. We, we we haven't seen do that yet. Yeah, As in, I think it's more someone that can yeah. come in and put the size on and do that. Plus, also, we've got no idea when it's set. Like A lot of people are expecting it to be more like the new timeline, which is a bit of a soft reboot, and which is more like Norse mythology. But they seem to be talking more about like the, the Greek, Greek mythology. Okay, that's where it all started, it, right? Which also, it's like, so we're going... All the way back. We're going younger. We're going to go younger. Do you know what I mean? That's fine, Um yeah. So I don't know, but I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to because I love the game so much. I'm just looking forward to that as a series, see if they can actually make it work. Then again, I said the same about Halo. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So those 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 are mine. But um, and again, it's an Amazon one again. I, I believe. I think. It, I think. Uh, God I think. Of War is an yeah. Amazon Gears, one. Uh, Gears, uh, Gears of War. <laughs> I think there's a right. Gears of War. Hey, show now in if you want to start still. fucking, let's get a Gears of War fucking series yes, going. Please. Yes, finally. <laughs> Way too late now because no one gives a fuck about it. Let's yeah. be honest. That's the pro. That's the, game the problem. Game series is. Yeah, it's died. They're still fine. No, isn't there a sixth one still? Uh, maybe, but after playing five, I kind of don't care anymore. It was anymore. better than four. I guess. And it left it on an open ending. Yeah, but not a good one. <laughs> this is true. So, it's still better than the recent Halo uh, offerings. Oh, I didn't mind Inf- uh, Infinity. Infinity. What was the? That, well, that was last one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, right. actually was... even, I didn't even bother with that. One. Oh, it was okay. <laughs> as in, like for like you know, going. Oh, we're gonna go open world with Halo. As it, they did open world better than what Gears tried to do, where they oh, just wow. gave you a couple of different points of open world and yeah. made it not very interesting. Yeah. So it was just a case of use this ski thing and find collectibles along the way. Uh, yeah. While we string these story bits together. That, that is literally it, yeah, while we panic. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah. But I, I, Gears, I just, I love the original so much, so I, I, I wouldn't, I'd have to watch it. Don't Whilst doing wrong. a massive declutter, I sold 80 of my Xbox games last week. Mm. Uh, but I kept all three Gears of War games in their collector's editions. I was like, Never oh, I've still got him in, in my office. I've still got the Marcus the statue. Oh wow! Uh, no, I've got, I've got rid of actually... I've got rid of all of my Xbox 360 games because I mean they're all on digital anyway. So, but Pretty much, you know what's oh, funny yeah. is I did have a recent um, it, urge to play through them all. Yeah. Um, in chronological order as well, which is funny because that means you have to start with Judgment. 
But I, I didn't mind Judgment as a game. It's just the way it deviated is, I think, what killed it. For a lot yeah. of people, it became very a, a lot more arcadey. I heard arcade-y. so many bad things. I actually avoided that It was one. because they, they made it a lot more arcadey, especially with the online function. It was a lot more quick-fire stuff. But right, but it was right. a good, it's a good story, the way it like shows Baird and Cole and everything, and then it just and melds they, in. So they met. Yeah. yeah, man, so that was okay. But I, personally, after reading the books and the comics as well for Gears, I'd rather see them do something like an Astro Fields game where they go... And they, they touched on it in Gears of War 4 where they let you play... A, a combat scene from Astro Fields where it's right. like, but I'd like to see it with um, Marcus and uh, Dom, see, Dominic's like, brother Carlos, his older brother. Yeah, because they, they, it's actually it was actually Carlos and Marcus who were like the best friends, if you know what I mean. Dom's okay. actually his younger brother. Right. Um, so I would like more. There's more lore. Backstory. I want. I want to go lore. back to the Emergence there's, Day. Yeah, there's, there's the first. There's the, really the, good lore. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. like some really good books and some yeah, really I mean, good, good comic books. Has, has read the books and said, well, obviously when we were playing the games, he would be dropping in. You know, background information and lore and the world building. I'm like, yeah, like, why isn't this being developed? Like, I guess it needs billions of dollars uh, to actually, you know, create the world of, is it Sarah? But, yeah. Sarah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah uh, like the wars for the emotion and everything like that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so did you want to go into games? Yeah. Let's go into games. Uh, all right, come on. I'm going to throw some out because. Uh... <laughs> so, first of all, just real quick, and obviously, I just want more Spider Man. Like just more, <laughs> so just either no, but what I mean is either DLC. But what I'd like to see them do is because obviously they did Spider Man, mm. and then what they did is they they released Miles Morales, which was very very clearly like, you know, like look, we've already got the city built. We're just going to change the character, and we're going to write this whole story and do this. But, sure, but it yeah. was certainly enough to not be not one of those games. It's not Call of Duty Three. We're like this is fucking DLC. You're making me pay. For. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, so I'd like to see them do <laughs> like saying. a Spider Man Two, Miles Morales Two, or something. Yeah. Um, or just yeah, just just I. St- even though I've platinumed it, I still go back and um, uh, play it just because it's fun. Also, they I don't know why they won't update it to let you replay chapters so I can replay. To, they they did it in the originals. They've not done it in this one for some reason. Okay. But they're constantly patching that game. So um, that would be cool. So more Spider-Man. Um, I'll, I'll probably go... This is probably my most... Um, anticipated game at the moment because of just playing spider-man is insomniac are doing wolverine next I'm okay like, put that in my face i can't wait <laughs> like they're you know that insomniac could, doing a wolverine game yeah <sighs> and yeah i don't think wolverine has dropped in popularity at all and with Deadpool three coming out that's and just going to remind we've everyone already had a fucking great wolverine game which was the origins movie tie-in game really was yeah it that movie sucked but that game was excellent it I had some of the Oh, mate, had an amazing physics engine in it where it's like he'd literally get shot down to the bone and you'd see him regenerate. regenerate. That's cool. It was just a great hack and slash, you know, sort of like, you know, platforming game. Brilliant. So, so Wolverine, there's, again, there's not a lot of details. There's like a teaser trailer. But this is another one where it's like we've talked for a few years about how it's sort of like when games are coming out, we do the like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to see how it drops. Starfield's a great example for me. I was like, let's see that drop and see what it's actually like before I invest in it. And Have stuff. you played much of that one? I haven't played at all. Oh, okay. I, do you know what? Again, when I finished Arkham, uh, Gotham Knights and I was like, I need something to play. And I was like, do I start Starfield? But I was like, I was like, it, it was like 11 o'clock at night and I'm like, I'm not. I'm not doing that now. Yeah, like, I need yeah. I need like four or five hours just to start the game in my head because it's sure. not not because of anything I've heard of said about the game. It's just in my head for a game that big. If you know you're putting a hundred hours in, it's like, dude, get yourself a good chunk of time ready to get into it and learn it. You know, yeah. so hell yeah. Um, so no, I haven't. <laughs> but yeah, in, Insomniac are um, one of the studios that have bought that. You know, with me, where I'm like, no, no, no. If if you if you if you're releasing it and you're saying it's done we're good i'm gonna buy it same thing i did with um god of war when ragnarok was coming out it's like nice. i'm playing that day one this <laughs> fucking, don't worry santa monica you have my money so that's absolutely fine awesome. um a- another one which is probably gonna do the same thing but i see are we gonna get gta 6 next year or i believe the, like the a trailer, trailer drops is imminent. next month yeah um, so i'm hoping the trailer has the, a release date if the trailer just starts with like the the wording that Michael drops again or something it's gonna be amazing just to troll people <laughs> where it's like you know where they think they're remaking the fifth one again but yeah I mean like if you tell me it's out I'll be getting it yeah that's yeah, a day one purchase you know me. five's incredible like not just that it's just more Rockstar 
production of a game is it's like did red dead 2 is still fucking incredible yeah exactly the level they're of detail st- they're still comparing red dead 2 to starfield physics yeah. wise to yeah. say why isn't this as good as this which like, came you know, out like 10 years ago i know man it's, it's absolutely <laughs> crazy um yeah. yeah so i'm looking forward to that um i did mention it but i'm, I'm gonna get the last of us 2 remake I w- I'm gonna get that. I'm that game a- only just came out. Why is it getting a Wasn't remake? too long ago that I fucking what finished it. What are they it. changing? Do you know what's funny as well? Because it, it was literally, it was literally right. It was on the cusp of the generational change. It exactly. was like the so absolute no last difference. thing. I know. Well, <laughs> they 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 made some good changes with the one that they put on. Um, the Last of Us One. Yeah, when well, they did that, that was remake. a few years. So yeah. Dude, I don't I know. I can't see this, but anything more than a cash I've been, grab. I've been itching. I've been itching to replay it recently. I, so we'll you're see. Just we'll see. The version. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. All that, all that bitching about like the remakes that they've released recently <laughs> being cash grabs, and this might be one. Yeah. But when I saw the advert, I went really, and I was like, I'm probably, probably going to buy it. I'm <laughs> probably going to buy it. On. I'm probably going to buy it. <laughs> We'll see. We'll absolutely see. Um, and then the other one that I'm really, really looking forward to, if it finally just fucking just release it, is Senua's Sacrifice 2. Can we just oh, have yes. that it's, fucking it's game been already? It's for years. Yeah. Just give us the game. <laughs> you know? and, and they're polishing it until it's literally absolutely just polished. Absolutely the most AAA independent game of all time. Yeah. Can we just play it already? The Please. first one was one of the best gaming experiences i've ever had i can't wait to have an excuse to replay it when the second one is coming out oh, yeah yeah everything about that game the law the art style the play uh, the, the you know the yeah the gameplay <clears throat> mind blowing no almost. <laughs> no no reason for it to be as good as it was for what it was if you know what i mean but yeah, yeah. i loved that game so i can't wait for the second one it's just it feels like so long ago they dropped that trailer um yeah and we're still but waiting. again, but again, I'm also the first also... person to be like, "Don't rush it out." So yeah, if yeah. it's not ready, it's not ready. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I've got a few games on my list as well. Again, in no particular order. Uh, some, you know, maybe of <laughs> some might not be too interested in, but uh, the Wolf Among Us Two. Mm. Uh, I I absolutely adore the early Telltale games, The Walking Dead, uh, The Wolf Among Us, uh, the Batman one. You know, so so. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is being developed by most of the original Telltale crew, uh, where you play as Bigby, the big bad wolf and sheriff of Fable Town, and you return to a gritty uh, sort of um, detective noir world where there are no fairy tale happy endings. Um, I-, I love the choose your own adventure, the way you weave the character through the story, uh, whether you can actually make you know, uh, impactful choices or not. It still feels like you take some ownership of that story. I love that world. I love the character of Big B. I've been waiting for this game for a couple of years now. So Mm. hopefully it's coming out next year. Uh, Another game that I've been waiting for that was due out like two years ago and then COVID and lockdowns and delays is uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Uh, You fight your way through a modern day Seattle on the brink of an open war as an elder vampire. Uh, you meet the power players and you ally yourself with who you decide and help rule uh, the city and what it will become. Uh, I absolutely love the Vampire the Masquerade universe. Have, you know, a gangrel uh, tattoo on my arm. I played the card game. Never really played the role play stuff, but the video games, absolute classic PC games. So, oh my God, when is this game actually going to come out? <laughs> Earth Defense Force 6. It's not actually the sixth game. It's like the 60th game. They release like side calls and pre-calls mm. and recalls every year. But this is the sixth installment. Uh, apparently this is going to be the largest volume in the history of the series. Of course, supporting uh, four-player co-op play. Uh, the largest amount of missions. The largest amount of weapons. All included. Going to support online co-op play. Uh, offline split screen as well. Take control of the four different class of soldier and fight billions and billions of spiders and ants and robot mechs and hmm. frog monsters that look just like humans and giant UFOs and utter cities being destroyed. Oh my God, like EDF. It's brain dead jank. Bullet hell. Bullet hell fun. Uh, I, I've been playing the EDF series for like 15 years now. 
and I get excited. Even though it's a janky ass, like, double A, single A game, they'll still charge full price for oh, it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm done. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> Uh, so you don't get to say yet. shit about me about like Last of Us <laughs> Remakes. Yeah. So we're all as bad as each other. Yeah, I know. It's all, like... all of us have got that fucking thing. <laughs> we got one of those games. Yeah. yeah. John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. It's a mm. new IP. Uh, it's coming from Saber Interactive. It's going to be releasing on PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, all of them. <laughs> yeah. Set in the near future, an experimental attempt to harness the power of the Earth's core ends in a terrifying disaster. The release of the Sludge God. This eldritch abomination begins terraforming the area, turning soil to scum and the living to undead monsters. However, the genius behind the experiment has a plan to make things right. All he needs is a team of competent, highly trained mercenaries to get the job done. Unfortunately, they're too expensive. So that's why he's hired the Toxic Commandos. <laughs> this is a game where you play with up to three other players in a Left for Dead, Back for Blood style, you know... Uh, you know, giant get from A to B kind of levels with, uh, you know, branching games master sort of spawning of monsters. And uh, as you level up your characters and unlock more weapons and skills and, you know, you replay the same levels over and over again, but you got varying levels of difficulty and all that kind of stuff. The fact that John Carpenter is involved creatively in terms of monster design, storytelling, characters, they've promised that it's going to have a fantastic 80s vibe to it all. I'm not the big fan of Saber Interactive after they mistreated the Evil Dead game. Hmm. Uh, but the fact that they're working with John Carpenter now, it's their own IP. They don't have to work with licensing issues and fees. I'm hopeful for this one. I saw the trailer for it last year or earlier this year. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for this one. Speaking of killing zombies, Killing Floor 3 will be coming out next year. Uh, it's the next installment in the legendary action horror shooter series. It's an intense first-person shooter. Puts you in the boots of a Nightfall specialist, joining forces with five teammates as you battle waves and waves of Zeds. You earn Dosh, you unlock skills, and you build the ultimate arsenal. Very similar to the game I just mentioned, but Killing Floor 2 was my first introduction to the franchise, and I played that for a good couple of years online. Uh, even though they kept, they added more levels, they had Christmas events, Halloween events, monthly events, uh, they kept adding new levels, new monster designs, and it's a fast-paced, epically sounding, gory shooter that it works on its replayability. The level design, the fact that you can go play defensively, play offensively, build uh, your camaraderie with your teammates, it's so much fun, and so... Killing Floor 2, they, the developers of that game have been, you know, they, they didn't abandon it on release. They kept working on it and adding on it for years and years and years. And so I guess it's now finally time to up the engine to, you know, modern generation. So this one, if you're a fan of the previous games, will probably be a day one must buy. I'll, uh, I'll jump to this next one before I get to my actual last one. And this one, again, it's tentatively, will it actually ever be released? Was mm. it just a demo reel the whole time? And it's I-L-L, -L, or ill. I don't know. It was all in capitals. Uh, it's a narrative-driven first-person survival horror game that transports you to a sinister settlement with the goal of uncovering and unsettling the truth behind its descent into bloodthirsty madness. The video that went out a while back uh, kind of braced you for an intense body horror with advanced dismemberment systems, dynamic enemy behaviors, complex weapon mechanics, and an immersive interactive world. And strategic survival and crafting all contributing to an unforgettable visceral journey into despair. The video highlighted like uh, a thing creature from John Carpenter's The Thing mm. matched with like a necromorph from Dead Space yeah, the way bit. that it moved and the way that when you shot it with a shotgun, limbs would fly off, tentacles would come out and it'd start regenerating. It looked, it looks too good to be real. I believed it was a tech demo when I first saw the footage. So it was being passed off as gameplay there's a, like, there's a lot of that unreal so. engine stuff going around that's exactly, the issue exactly exactly so. so whether this actually comes to be i don't know if it does 
holy shit, this could be the horror game of the year. Mm. But I guess we'll have to see. So now this one that you're about to go into, this was on my list as well, but I was like, oh wait, there's no way this isn't on his list because when we saw the announcement. But also before we do that, I'll also just throw out whatever Resi game we get next year. There isn't one planned for next really? year. Yeah, Resident Evil 9 hasn't even been or remake, officially even? announced yet. Mm. They haven't, there's, I, there's no plans to re, to like release Resident Evil 5. Like that's going to take a couple of years to make. Like Resident Evil 4 and Village kind of were working, you know, almost in tandem. they got to polish that boulder punch, they gotta, haven't they? Exactly, yeah. Chris. They, they're going to get that boulder punch right if they're going to remake it. <laughs> Uh, but it also looks like, you know, I mean, I, I've heard, I, I, I don't like the leaks and the spoilers, but it looks like Wesker might not die in this Resident Evil 5. I Remake heard that as they well. Do it I heard, Because yeah. they regretted killing him off, apparently. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, we're going to keep making stories about Wesker now. He's such an adorable Shit. prick. He's, <laughs> he just gotta, like, you know... He's one of my, if not favorite video game villains of all time. Yeah. Uh, and so... He's just a knob. Yeah. He's the best way to describe him. But he's like, cool. He's like, oh, he's such a knob. <laughs> But he is really cool. But yeah. I mean, to be fair, it did take a volcano and an RPG sort of face to kill him. That's pretty OP. No doubt. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, no Resident Evil next year. But but Silent Hill Two remake. Now I I kept I, I kept this out of the news segment. I it was originally in there, but I deleted it out because otherwise I would probably go into an hour long. Rant. I'm going to try not to get angry now. An hour long rant about how fucking awfully insulting the most recent Silent Hill release has been. The, uh, I, I, you know, Google it, look it up. Silent Hill, the TV show, video game adventure, you know, spend a million pounds to influence the story how you want game is the first Silent Hill release in all this time. And it's a fucking slap in the face. The Silent they Hill did it, fans. So they did it wrong on purpose. <laughs> right? So I'm just like, well, maybe they're just setting up, you know, like, say whatever expectations are real low, so that the Silent Hill 2 remake, it don't look too bad when you compare it to what just came out. Oh, my God. Now, I know that a lot of people don't really like t uh, the Bloober team. I've liked a lot of their stuff. I, I really loved uh, Observer. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that one. I've played that one through a couple of times now. I didn't mind the Blair Witch game as well. I played that one through twice. Mm. Very atmospheric. Uh, yes, a lot of the criticisms of, of Bloober Team come to the psychological kind of writing of characters. And in most of the Team Bloober games, there's not a lot of like one-to-one -one character interactions. Like all of Observer is done through screen doors. You don't really talk to anybody. There's like one person you talk to in person in that game. Like the whole of uh, the Blair Witch Project, you're on your own with your dog the entire time you know and um layers of fear same kind of thing so it's gonna be it's a huge step out like i still haven't uh still didn't play bloober's last game uh but i'm very excited for the visuals the trailer that they put together yes they might capture the essence of the vibe the visuals the animation the monsters the music it's all there but it's the story and the characters and if they fuck it up there's no undoing it so i'm hopeful i'm hopeful for it hopeful i want a word. good survival horror game yeah. i want to see more new silent hill stories that doesn't just keep relying on silent hill 2 like all the other you know american adaptations of silent hill have been ah oh, here we go <laughs> still don't have a release date yet people were expecting it to have come out by now but they still yeah. don't have a release date yet so i'm guessing team bloober are still polishing that's a good game. thing. That's yeah, a good that's thing. a good thing. It is a good thing. So uh, that's it for uh, my video games uh, for 2024 that I'm excited for. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed on some of them. Indeed, indeed. Alrighty, well, that's going to conclude the second part of the podcast. We're going to take a small break, but when we come back, we will be answering your questions. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to the third part of the podcast where we will be answering your questions yeah. now, i should also just say right now that because ian is absent we didn't get the facebook questions um this podcast so we only have the questions that have come from the live chat and we only have a few of them we're going to do our best to honor and answer those questions but also keep this section of the podcast relatively short as you may have guessed my voice is starting to wane and and hurt so uh we're still going to answer those questions that have come in, though. So the first question has actually come in from my name is Duke the Doom Guy himself. 
asking, if you were to make a wagon wheel sandwich using two wagon wheels as the bread, what would your filling be? A wagon wheel. <laughs> so triple wagon wheel. Well, fuck it at this point. You know what? I, I always liked the wagon wheels with jam in them. I was literally about to say peanut, but, peanut butter and jam. But there was never enough jam mm. or peanut butter in them. So give me give me a layer of actual jam. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go team peanut butter and say peanut butter between it. Peanut butter and mm. jam, or or both, or either. Yeah. Just gonna take it apart like an Oreo anyway. No. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the random question, Ian. Nice. <laughs> Next question is from Richie Scarface. What up, Richie? Yo, Richie. Hi, guys. This might be as controversial as Andy's Dead Space review. <laughs> Do you like pineapple on pizza? <laughs> I like it when I have pepperoni because of the contrasting flavors. I understand that. And I don't dislike pineapple on pizza. However, I haven't had a uh, Hawaiian, you know, because it's ham and pineapple. I haven't had a Hawaiian pizza in about 10 years. Yeah, no, I haven't either. But I, as in, like, I, it's not, I'm not going to order it, like, in general. But when I've had it, I prefer it with something like pepper. It's got to be some, with something salty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, if you yeah. get some kind of salty meat with it, I'm all down for it. You know, like, I love random combinations like that. Um, but i got to admit, it's like, that would only be if I went somewhere to have, like, a, a nice pizza. Do you know what? Do you know I take what I mean? it back. I have had pineapple pizza. When I, uh, Pizza Hut, um, do, like, for, like, two hours every day, uh, at certain oh, time the slots, the buffet, or you can eat, or buffet, you can eat yeah. pizza buffet. So literally, they serve up like four different pizzas. You go up, take a slice of that one, slice of that one, slice of that one, maybe four slices of that one. Mm. You know, and all your salad and whatever. And yeah, and if there's a pineapple pizza along the selection, I'm like, it's only one slice. I'll go for it's that. Not the whole yeah. pizza. So yeah, yeah. Don't just like it. I don't think it's a crime against food. You know, but it's not the pizza I would. It's pick. not the one I'm going to order. I. Do you know what? I just really like just either. Meat feast. Dude, I, I'll go Kevin McAllister and go plain cheese is nice if there's a lot of nice. You put good two or three flavors. different cheeses yeah. on it, I'm good. Or just a, nine times out of ten when we're doing the drunk pizza order, when, you know, uh, when we're like, like a bottle of whiskey deep, me and my mate, it'll be, I'll literally be like double cheese, double pepperoni, done. Very good. Yeah. Her, just that'll do. Nice. Cheers for the question, Richie. Great question, though. It needs to be asked. <laughs> it does every so often. It needs to be asked. <laughs> Alrighty, next question is from Neurovisor. What's up, dude? You guys are in... This is a hypothetical. Oh, here we go. You guys are in the middle of nowhere. You just uh, you just ignore the advice of the gas station owner and you went down that road. You want to go down that yeah. road. Now you're at a crossroads. One road leads to an Adam Sandler movie of your choice. The other leads to Hellraiser's Hell World. You can always go back... But that leads to Skynet destroying humanity. And if you do decide not to move, Gary turns into the fly and Andy into a French mime. Ooh. So what path do you choose? Right, okay. So obviously we're going to have to take one because I'm not living out my life as a fucking mime. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to turn into Brundlefly. We go back, we destroy humanity. So that's not a thing. So so basically you're saying that it's a choice between Hell living in Hellraiser's Hell World. Hell World. When it says leads to an Adam Sandler movie, are we saying... To watch one, or we that's the world we live in because <laughs> it, it's it almost what so all I gotta do is watch an Adam Sandler movie over living in the hell world. That's fine, but if you're suggesting I have to live in the same world as Jack and Jill, I might select the fucking Sanabites. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you know? But I mean, if you go to the Jack and Jill world, it's pretty much our world, right? <laughs> mm. Just the movies clarified in the thing. Oh, so we just have to watch the movie. All right. Is this a trick to do get I have me to, to say? Do I have to watch it with him? Because that's worse. <laughs> we go together. Yeah, be like, no, I'll fucking watch it first. Can I go yeah. with you? <laughs> I mean, I've said it a couple of times. I'm watching The Longest Yard. That's a good point, Richie. Damn right. That's good Sunday viewing. It's not a bad show, actually. Yeah, we'll go like, watch The Longest Yard. I've said a couple of times. I don't usually admit this because I've made my <laughs> viewpoints on Adam Sandler movies very clear. I'll never, ever review another Adam Sandler movie. I will never go out of my way to watch an Adam Sandler movie unless the movie is not an Adam Sandler movie, but Adam Sandler is in it. Like Uncut you know? Gems That's, or something like that. Like Uncut Gems. I'm, I would consider watching it, but after... I, I just don't have any... I, I don't care about that story or that character. I'm not really interested in, in that one. But I do like um, The Wedding Singer. 
Uh, yeah, that's fun. I, I like uh, Fifty First Dates as well. I like. I like uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore, I was just about to say, she, clearly you're a fan of Drew Barrymore. Exactly, yeah. she works really well with Adam Sandler. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, any other Adam Sandler movie for me, they're interchangeable with absolutely any of his other other films. So I'm not going to go on a rant or a tirade because my throat can't take it. But uh, yeah, I don't really want to see Skynet blow everything up. Although sometimes I'm like, you know what? I, don't know, I can watch the news it. for about 45 minutes and I'm like, just fucking end it. Just scorch yeah, we're going the earth. Back. Just scorch the earth. <laughs> 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 Cheers for the question, your advisor. <laughs> Good question, dude. Good question. Uh, okay. We've got one more question actually just come in. Just oh, come sweet. in. This one's Hot from off the press. Nifty Guy. What's up, Nifty Guy? What are some of your must-watch movie shows of the 2020s so far? <laughs> must-watch TV shows of the 2020s so far. There's been some great ones. I'm going to go with For All Mankind. It's been in my top ten every year that every there has been a season. I'm two episodes into season four right now. Slow going, but the first few episodes of every season has been slow going because they do big time jumps. They introduce new characters. They've been going through the decades. So, like, the makeup on some of the actors now is a little bit uh, ropey. Uh, but the, the, the world building and the special effects are outstanding. Love, love, love For All Mankind. Though I've been hearing some bad reviews for the fourth season so far. I don't think it's as bad as some of them are. Mm. Uh, it's still building up to what's to come next. So For All Mankind, number one for me right now. Love I mean, my sci-fi. Movies-wise, I mean, fucking, you got to watch The Northman. The Northman, I love that great. Movie. It was yeah, my favourite movie great. of last year. Like the, the, the Northman was amazing, to be honest, to watch. Yeah, The Bear, we talked about earlier in the podcast. F- just for the performances... Uh, uh, even though I'm not interested in chefs or running a restaurant, it's phenomenal. Like it's compelling viewing. Absolutely. Your first show, Full Monty, was great. <laughs> right. It really was. <laughs> it had no right to be, and I really, really enjoyed the Full Monty. Yeah. We, uh, to the point, it may be on my top ten because it was, it was um, just uh, again another great sort of like here's some fucking you know great, you know st- um, character development. Yeah, done really well. So, and I love that kind of thing. So, uh, Twisted Metal, the, the, still, the oh, recent no, I still TV show. I haven't watched it. I, I was, I was it. so unaware of how much fun I was going to have watching that. Like first episode in, I was like, you know what? This is just the 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 bizarro kind of adaptation that I needed. Fast cars, gore, violence, recognizable characters, Samoa and vehicles. Joe is playing Samoa thing, Joe yeah. is fantastic uh, in the part. Um, although it's um, it's the guy who voiced uh, Batman in the uh, what's he called? So Samoa Joe is the the person, but the uh, different voice. Yeah. But f- absolutely brilliant. Really loved it. the The main actor, like I've forgotten what he's called, but you know he's the new oh, Captain America. An- 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 yeah, that's it. Anthony. Is it Mackie? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't really like him Out too then. much in this Marvel stuff, but he is brilliant in this. Really loved him can't wait for a season two i don't know if we're getting like with some of these big expensive shows we're not getting them every year but every other year so if there's a season two next year it would have been on my list as well mm. um house of the dragon severance i was um, gonna say star um, trek strange new worlds picard season three the menu that was a great film. the menu was a great film yeah right now i'm just on tv shows but yeah um you mentioned the Northman. I'll say Peacemaker. Top Gun Maverick. All day. Yeah, Peacemaker is still, Peacemaker yeah, still is great. great. Still great. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of any like, really standout ones. Dude was just said that the main about. guy in the bear kind of looks like a young Gene Wilder. He absolutely looks-wise. does. He really does. He's yeah, got that does. same kind of angular, pointed yeah. like face. I mean, I can't wait to see because he's going gonna to be in... From, yeah, from season two had such a cliffhanger ending i was just like please tell me you've not been cancelled please tell me you've not been cancelled <laughs> like even stephen king was again like stephen king tweets a lot mm. uh but he was just like i can't believe like from is like lost in a stephen king universe you know mm. uh absolutely compelling horror stuff and uh yeah i can't wait for season three like there there was um there was some great like brought up loki season one and two and i think there was some really good mcu series well i loved one division i thought i loved one of one of my favorite fucking great of the bunch i i th- absolutely i think so far like overall that's been my favorite as well to be honest yeah. i can't think of a better one or one that was absolutely because that was and i know it was during the pandemic so things were a little bit different but that for me was like week on week must see tv it was all three of us in the house sat down to watch one division you know nice yeah um, yeah so that it was, was like an event good. wasn't it it was the, really the launch yeah, of the man, marvel extended like tv universe yeah it was yeah definitely 
There's probably some others, but I'm um, drawing. Yeah, we're missing right some now. really I think we easy ones, obviously. Some of Barbarian. The... Barbarian. Fucking yeah. watch Barbarian. That's a great. Uh, film. Evil Dead. Evil Dead Rise. Ah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was a treat. That was yeah, such a good movie. Yeah. Uh, what was the uh, you mentioned? It, you just got the Blu-ray, the Christmas movie, the Violent Night. Violent Night. Yeah, 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 yeah great, that was great, great fun. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Hopefully, uh, we gave you some uh, some good uh, answers there, Nifty Guy, and hopefully, some ones or some shows or movies uh, that you may not have heard of that you might want to go and check out. out. Awesome. Well, that is going to conclude this part of the podcast. I apologize that the Q and A is a little bit short, but that just means. We're going to have tons more questions next month as we prep for Christmas. Mm. The next podcast will be a Christmas-themed one. We'll probably be in Christmas jumpers. I think we're just going to get <laughs> get get Christmas jumpers on. But we're going to have a drink. Put some lights on. We're all going to get shit faced. We're going to get shit faced. That's what we're working out. So the theme might just go up in uh, alcoholic vapors. Who knows? Who knows? But, of course, we'll have brand new film reviews on Thursdays. You can find us on Facebook, on X, on Patreon, and uh, on Podbean, and all the other good places where our podcast is hosted. And if anything, come and join our Discord, uh, where we keep the conversation going, films, TV shows, and wrestling, all day long. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in for this podcast, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.